Recording in progress. That's right. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Day last. We're starting off with G3. And I'll turn to Kelly Ames to, uh, for the overview. Kelly? Good morning, Chair, Council Members. This is Agenda Item G3, Membership Appointments and Council Operating Procedures. Under this agenda item, the Council considers administrative appointment issues regarding the Council's membership roster. For Council Members, uh, officers, and designees, as you note in your briefing book, there were uh, no changes. Uh, however, since that time, uh, as notified earlier in the meeting, Kurt Melcher has retired from the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife on April 1st, and the interim director is Ms. Davia Palmieri. Uh, so our website and roster has been updated accordingly. For council advisory body appointments for the 2022-2024 term, uh, again, there was nothing in the briefing book, but since that uh, publication of the briefing book, we were notified uh, that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has appointed a representative for the Sacramento Fall Chinook Work Group. Uh, that's Mr. Craig Fleming. Uh, also, recall that uh, for the SAS Oregon Troll position, uh, we had been having Mr. Mark Newell as our interim rep. Uh, to, uh, this meeting was his last meeting, but he uh, has found a replacement, Mr. John Alto, who is a member of the Oregon Salmon Commission. I uh, wanted to alert you that uh, Chair Pettinger, in coordination with Executive Director Burden, uh, has made Mr. Alto an interim uh, member of the SAS. And uh, Mr. Alto will be serving for the balance of this year and then intends to put his name in for the upcoming uh, advisory body term when we solicit nominations this fall. Uh, so really appreciate uh, that appointment. Understand Mr. Alto did a great job on the SAS this week. Uh, there are no changes to the council operating procedures. So. Uh, really, in sum, this is an informational update on your membership roster. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, any questions for Kelly on the overview? All right. Any, any discussion to be had, Lynn? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, great job on pronouncing our new director's uh, name. I know it's a little confusing, it can be confusing. Um, wanted to thank Mr. Alto for being willing to step into the role on the SAS. Uh, 
spoke with John North about him because since that's more in John's wheelhouse, John has worked, John North has worked with John Alto for about 40 years and thinks he will be a good candidate. So appreciate him being willing to do that and the chair and executive director appointing him to fill that spot to help Oregon out. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. All right. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just like to uh, let the state of Oregon know they're getting a really good Johnny Alto is really good. His uh, significant other uh, was down in El Waco feeding the feeding the crabbers when during the fire and and really melted into the community. And Johnny is a top notch fisherman and a top notch guy. And I so I think you're you got a good replacement there. So anyway, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Butch. <clears throat> okay. Anyone else? Hey, Kelly, how are we doing? Thank you, Mr. Chair. You are completed with this agenda item. All right, uh, four minutes. We're, we're doing pretty good here. All right, uh, next up will be the uh, G4, Future Council Meeting Agenda and Workload Planning. And I'll turn to uh, Executive Director Merrick Burden. Merrick? <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Council Members. Uh, this is Agenda Item G4, uh, Future Council Meeting Agenda and Workload Planning. This agenda item is intended to refine general planning for future Pacific Fishery Management Council meetings with a focus on finalizing the proposed agenda for the June 2024 Council Meeting in San Diego, California. There are a couple of attachments for you. Uh, the usual, the preliminary year at a glance uh, summary, as well as a preliminary proposed June 2024 Council meeting agenda. So uh, per usual, I'll assist you with reviewing these materials uh, and after considering um, the supplemental material that's been provided as well. Uh, so you do have some supplemental year to glance summaries and a supplemental quick reference agenda. Um, uh, we can uh, consider those. Uh, and then we also have a update on progress toward planning the HMS uh, roadmap workshop. So that's scheduled just directly in advance of the June um, meeting. That would be June 6 and 7. Uh, we have identified a facilitator and are working with that facilitator to plan the workshop as we speak. And then we also have uh, a, a new item here as well, which is an update on the funding, staffing, and coordination activities associated with the Inflation Reduction Act proposals that were submitted earlier this year. Those are also included uh, as an attachment in the briefing materials for you. So the council action, uh, review pertinent information and provide guidance on potential agenda topics for future council meetings, provide final guidance on the proposed June agenda, it should read June, the plans for future council meetings, identify priorities for advisory body workload considerations, and then provide guidance as appropriate regarding the HMS roadmap workshop and coordination of the IRA proposals. Happy to pause here for any questions. Otherwise, uh, I think what would be best is if I gave you a quick overview of the supplemental uh, year to glance and uh, QR agenda. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, questions on the overview? Marcy Repco. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to note that John Ugaretz is online and as normal in this agenda item, he will um, be wanting to make comments and we'll use the raise hand feature. Thank you. Thank you, Marcy. Okay. All right. Sure. Okay. Well, I will start with the uh, year at a glance. Um, I'll skip over June because we will go through June in more detail. So if we look out beyond June, uh, going to September, uh, we do have a, uh, every meeting is a ground fish meeting. So I have quite a few ground fish topics. Uh, we're teeing up for September. Um, some of those are usual uh, in-season management issues. Uh, we have workload and new management measures update. We have a methodology review. Uh, we also have uh, two stock definition items. One is for uh, species that are scheduled for assessment in our next uh, specification cycles. Uh, and then the second one is what we're referring to as phase two stock definitions. Um, that's a more, I think of it as a more comprehensive view of our complexes and the management of those in our FMP. Uh, we also have shaded uh, two uh, trawl catch share issues. Uh, one is the trawl catch share program and intersector allocation review scoping. But we're aiming to start that this year uh, and have that spill over into next year as part of our um, no cost extension. Uh, we also have the trawl cost project uh, that's 
underway and we will have a review of some analysis at that point. Moving down, this is also an HMS meeting in September, a few items there, international management, EFPs, 2526 specs, and then we'll have a report in September from the uh, June workshop that I just referenced as part of my overview. Uh, salmon, a uh, couple of items of note there. Final topic selection for the methodology review. Uh, we also have check in on the, uh, or I'm sorry, range of alternatives in the PPA on the Queets Spring Summer Chinook Rebuilding Plan. Uh, we come down to ecosystem matters. There's a progress review on FEP Initiative 4. And then we have a couple of items here uh, on Pacific halibut. Uh, I heard earlier today that perhaps that in-season uh, issue uh, is no longer germane and that it should be uh, our usual fishery regulation matter rather than in-season flexibility discussions. Uh, and then moving down the list, habitat issues, uh, admin issues. We have the shaded matter here on the regional recusal determination handbook. Uh, and then a shaded item for the council operations and priorities. And I'd note on that matter, that might be September or November, depending on how the June discussion goes. Uh, we also have tentatively a uh, IRA project check-in in September. All of that feels a little bit up in the air since we still don't have funding available. So um, that'll be moved around as necessary. And then marine planning. So we look out further in the year, uh, November, uh, come back for CPS, a few items there. Um, one of which uh, was discussed this week, which is the science needs and priorities. Uh, ground fish, we have a few matters uh, looking to come back for the phase two stock definitions, a uh, range of alternative and a PPA if possible, that's shaded. Uh, moving down, we have another HMS Series of HMS matters. Uh, one item we've stuck in there is the uh, FMP amendment to remove DGN gear from the H HMS FMP. On salmon, we have two, uh, tentatively two of our Chinook work groups uh, providing progress reports. And then a few other matters as you continue to go down. Um, let's see, looking out throughout the balance of the next 12 months, um, a lot of the items in the list are fairly standard matters. Just going down March here. We do have our limited entry fixed gear follow on FPA scheduled for March. I think I'll just pause there, Mr. Chairman, see if there are any questions about the year at a glance, and then otherwise I can go provide a quick overview on the QR agenda. I would say it probably doesn't make sense to get into a lot of debate here just yet. Um, instead, we should hear from the advisory bodies, but if there are any outstanding questions about my brief overview, I'm happy to provide them. Okay, questions on the uh, year's glance? Corey Ridings. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, thanks, Director Burden. My question is looking at the IRA project check-in and the IRA adaptive management response. Can you, um, I heard you say a little bit about, you know, some of this stuff might move depending on if the money is received or not. And I'm just trying to understand the difference between those two chunks and how you're envisioning those relationships. Sure. Um, the September item is, um, as we think about when funding might become available, um, I'm hearing it might be May. And at this point, we've heard <laughs> several times now that it might be available any day now. So uh, if it comes in in May, um, you know, we could, what I would anticipate doing is letting you know in June that funding has arrived, but we won't have much more to say at that point. So then the next council meeting would be September where we would have had some time to organize our thoughts and um, pin down a plan about how the work will proceed um, following the receipt of that money. Um, at this point, since we are several months already into the year, I'm starting to get to a point where we may have to reimagine how we are planning this work compared to what was in our proposals, because we are quickly going to be six months into the year, which is a big chunk of uh, time uh, where we had thought we'd be working on IRA proposals. So. Um, or IRA projects rather. So the September meeting would be a time where we'd come back and say, here's our thinking about how we envision proceeding and getting your feedback on that. 
Um, the November matter, uh, the adaptive management response is one of the particular proposals. And um, as we had <clears throat> envisioned how that work may unfold in that proposal that we developed, we had envisioned a 2024 uh, check-in with you all between um, or with a, I guess at the time we were envisioning an interagency working group that would develop a, you know, flesh out a paper about the scope of that work and bring that back to you as a more specific uh, way forward on that project. So that, that's that been there since the uh, March meeting. We also spoke about that item. So those are, uh, like I said, shaded um, until we know more about funding and until the funding arrives, but some tentative thinking about those two items. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Corey. Oh, Phil Anderson. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, and maybe it's here, Merrick, and it's, I'm just not seeing it. I know that Council has a significant uh, comprehensive look at their advisory panel membership and composition. Uh, it's, I think it's kind of a two meeting, sep June, September process before you put out the solicitations for the uh, next three year cycle. And I, I don't see that on here. Maybe it's buried in the council somewhere, but under admin, but I, it might be worthwhile to, to call that out, given that there'll be some, I suspect some significant time needed to um, work through that review. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Anderson, for that comment. Uh, you are correct. It is uh, included in the admin row. <clears throat> so you'll note, it says routine admin 11 for a couple of meetings, and it goes down to 10 and 9. So the 11th matter is this three-meeting process that you just referenced. I think we're happy to call that out specifically if, if you think that'd be helpful. Okay. Thank you, Phil. All right. Mark Rilnick. Uh, thank you, Chair Penger. Just to follow up. On Mr. Anderson's point, I do see it, and maybe we'll get to it on the June agenda, but we have two hours and a lot of stuff to cover. So when we come to more detail to the June agenda, we might want to consider whether two hours is enough for the amount of work we have to do there. So let's segue into the June agenda. I think so. Okay. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Excellent segue, Mark. Uh, okay, going over then to the quick reference agenda for June, uh, just as I noted in my overview, <clears throat> and then what's not included in here is a HMS roadmap workshop, which uh, does predate um, or starts right before the June council meeting starts. Um, and so that's not included here, but it is made note of under other meetings to your far left. Uh, so that's what that's referring to. Um, on Friday, uh, we do have a full start to the to the week per usual, so several committees. Um, we ended up striking the SAS and STT. Um, there didn't seem to be a need for them to meet given the, um, the light number of salmon matters that are coming before us in June. Uh, moving over then to Saturday, uh, beginning the day per usual um, with some administrative matters and uh, covering our salmon items. Uh, late in the day there. Uh, we did have, add a NIMS report on salmon uh, compared to the, um, the QR agenda that's in your briefing book. And then you see there we have a couple of uh, couple of updates and progress reports, one on the SAC fall work group, uh, one on the Queets uh, rebuilding plan uh, that is uh, being worked on as we speak. Uh, we also then have several advisory bodies meeting as noted uh, in the row on the bottom. On Sunday, uh, we take up a few groundfish items. One is the coral restoration and research. We're looking for FPA in June. Uh, folks are working diligently on that as we speak. Uh, we also have final stock assessment plan in terms of reference. Uh, HMS, we have a few matters. Uh, NIMS report, international EFPs, and the DGN bycatch performance report. And then as we move over to June, I'm sorry, over to Monday, June 10th, uh, several cross FMP issues, uh, marine planning. Uh, we're scheduling the NEMS EEJ plan and a EEJC update. Uh, my understanding is that it is unlikely the NEMS regional plan will be available by June. 
Uh, we have a few other matters that the EEJC may be uh, weighing in on, one of which is a National Academy of Sciences report that was commissioned by NIMS and published recently. Uh, moving down through groundfish, um, like I indicated uh, earlier, we do have stock definitions for species assessed in 25 and 27. Here, this is a range of alternatives. Uh, we have a FPA on fixed gear marking and entanglement risk reduction. On CPS, uh, we've struck the struck in the uh, central subpopulation uh, biomass check-in. Uh, that's due to the you'll perhaps recall the flow chart that's now in our COPs outlining when this uh, comes back to the council and the situation is such that it doesn't trigger that step anymore. And so we've uh, struck that from the agenda. Um, and then we have a stock assessment terms of reference and best practices uh, per our processes outlined in the COPs. Uh, let's see, cross FMP, um, as I indicated earlier, we'll have council operations and priorities. So this is where I'll bring forward a series of recommendations that stem from the January Committee of the Whole. Uh, we have on ground fish, we have 25, 26 EFPs, uh, specs and management measures. That's the final final action, and that's a two-step process, the way that we've scheduled it here. Moving over into Wednesday, uh, legislative matters. Uh, we've kept legislative matters on the agenda. Uh, it seems like perhaps a meeting would be in order, although happy to consult with the legislative uh, committee leadership on whether that is indeed uh, something that's likely to come to fruition. Uh, we have fiscal matters, and so this is the meeting where we adopt our uh, operating budget for the year. Uh, some other standard matters, the council meeting record. Uh, and ground fish on Wednesday, we have our second step for the 2526 specs and management measures <coughs> and then in season management. And then Thursday rounds out the day, or the week, the week rather. I feel like I have a mouthful of marbles this morning. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thursday, we round out the week with some typical um, typical agenda items on the administrative side. Let's see, and then just looking at the bottom row, um, our committees, like I indicated earlier, start off committee heavy early during the meeting week and uh, the committees drop off as we go. Per usual, our ground fish workhorses are there for several meetings, for several days rather. So that is the quick reference agenda. <laughs> Happy to take any questions on that. Okay, <clears throat> questions? I'm newly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Question, Merrick. Um, you might have said it, I might have missed it uh, about the other meetings above in the bottom left hand corner on the <coughs> HMS workshop and how that's how that's going to be handled. Is that um, they see to be determined other people there? Is it, are, are they is a Council thing, or people expected to attend this, or what's what's going on there? Um, let's see, I guess a couple of uh, remarks here, Mr. Julie, and then I'll look to uh, Kelly to see if she can help me on the uh, TBD row. But the HMS workshop, the quick update there is we have uh, secured a facilitator. Um, we secured that, that company just immediately before uh, we started this council meeting. That company is Concur. Uh, I believe some of you may know them. They've worked especially in the state of California process. Uh, they are off to the races. Uh, they speak our language, and uh, I think we're all pretty confident of their capabilities. Um, so we are right now organizing, still organizing our thoughts on their specific invite list, but certainly our two uh, HMS committees are going to be invited, and we're also asking ourselves who else. Um, so that's still under development with the facilitator. I guess I'll look at Kelly to see if she can help me out with that second row that indicates TBD. Through the chair, uh, thanks for the question. TBD is intended to just note that we are holding CPS, MTNAS, SAS, and STT meetings at some point prior to the June council meeting. They will be remote. And so in our 
you know, pre-COVID world, when we all met in person, they would have been shown on our quick reference meeting in person coincident with the June council meeting. Now that we've moved to a different format, I just wanted to acknowledge that those groups will still be meeting to provide input on the salmon and CPS agenda items. Just right now, we don't know when, uh, but they'll be meeting online prior to the meeting. Okay. Well, thank you, Kelly. Thanks, Mary. I, I was confusing that maybe there was some linkage between the workshop and those committees, and I couldn't that, that you answered the question. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Anyone else? Oh, Vice Chair Hasmer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Executive Director Burden, I, I know closed session is closed. We don't discuss the topic, but I see we have two hours in June as opposed to our normal one hour. That That is correct. That's the plan. Through the chair, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Hasmer. Yes, the, the two hours for the closed session relates to our membership uh, considerations for the upcoming 2025-2027 term. Typically, the council has quite a robust discussion in advance of that. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. With that, we're going to go to the uh, reports. First up will be uh, the GMT report and Abby Moyer. Abby, are you there? I am here. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, council members. I am here to read the Groundfish Management Team report on future council meeting agenda and workload planning. Under agenda item F5, the Pacific Fishery Management Council is expected to have provided the groundfish management team clarifications and potential new analyses to complete within the harvest specifications and new management measure timeline, final preferred alternative in June 2024. The GMT requests the council prioritize our forthcoming workload to complete the 2025-26 harvest specifications and management measure process, including guidance on short spine thorny head new management measure analysis, California quillback rockfish rebuilding plan analysis, any other pending council decisions under F5. May 8th is the advanced briefing book deadline, which gives the team four weeks starting from the end of this April meeting to analyze and complete all products. In June, the GMT will be on the council floor for harvest specifications on Wednesday, June 12th, but also scheduled to travel home that day. The GMT requests to stay through the groundfish floor discussions for F5 adopt final 2025-26 EFPs specifications in management measures and F7 in season management, then travel the following day, June 13th. In the past, this travel schedule was allowed and will benefit the team to follow the discussions and decisions on harvest specifications and in season creating continuity of understanding and travel home safely. And that concludes the GMT report. All right. Thank you, Abby. Uh, questions on the GMT report? I'm not seeing any. Thank you, Abby. All right. Next up will be the GAP report and Susan Chambers. Susan, welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Um, let me find my right window here. Okay. Yep. Uh, Good morning, council members and Chair Pettinger. Thank you. Um, I will be providing the ground fish advisory panel report on future meeting agenda and workload planning for June 2024 and referencing the draft June 2024 agenda. We recommend the following. Uh, one, allowing for more time for the GAP and GMT to work through agenda item F5, adopting EFPs and management measures. The GAP and GMT will have three days to finish their work according to the draft June agenda. However, one more day, for example, moving this item from Monday to Tuesday would help ensure the gap in GMT can work through, through the discussions on some items, many of which will require additional thought, discussion, and revision 
prior to finalizing our statements. And I will note that on the supplemental June agenda, um, that did take place. So we appreciate that. Uh, secondly, potentially planning for a pre-council gap webinar that could include marine planning, stock definitions, and coral restoration, and research agenda items. This would free up more in-person time to work on some of the heavier, more detailed agenda items. Regarding the draft year at a glance, the GAP recommends the following. <clears throat> Unshading the trawl catch share program and intersecting intersector allocation review scoping and the trawl cost project review and next steps. Most of the items targeted for action from the first trawl catch share program review have been wrapped up. This seems like an appropriate time to start the considerations for the next round. Removing the in-season flexibility part of the halibut items in September and November, as those have already been addressed by the council in November, 2023. And requesting an update on halibut bycatch in September or November, <clears throat> but well ahead of the IPHC meeting in January, 2025. Possibly at the same time, the council takes up regulations surrounding the commercial directed halibut fishery that is streamer lines, VMS, fish ticket modifications. For non-agenda items uh, regarding the council member report, the gap fully supports Ms. Corey Writing's request to explore the data gaps, data sets, and origins of the data, et cetera, for ground fish. An overview of the data collections and repositories and their use in fisheries management would be very beneficial to stakeholders and the public at large. The GAP is always interested in transparency and sees where this effort could be beneficial to include all states and tribes as well. The GAP supports the additional SSC workshops as noted in our stock assessment discussion under agenda item F3A supplemental GAP report from March 2024, especially the closed area workshop. The GAP has commented on and supported this several times under future workload planning. The SSC proposes this kind of workshop sometime later this year, and we appreciate the SSC's focus on this and anticipates the participation of at least one GAP member in this workshop. The GAP understands SSC Groundfish and Economics subcommittees also propose a meeting to discuss the methods for the state federal catch proportion analysis in the summer. We support this idea and will be interested in attending. Lastly, Similar to the closed area workshop, the GAP supports the SSC's proposal for a workshop to consider the use of remotely operated vehicle data and its use in stock assessments. This could shed more light on the abundance estimates for quillback rockfish, which currently constrains several California fishers. Uh, Mr. Chair, that concludes our report and I'm happy to take any questions. All right, thank you, Susan. Uh, questions for the GAP report? Marcy, your are up, go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Susan. I have a couple of questions for you. Um, first, on the halibut bycatch item mm -hmm. for September or November, um, can you please elaborate on exactly what you're looking for? Are you looking for data um, on bycatch? And if so, in what fishery or fisheries? And I mean, you mentioned September or November. Um, you might recall we had made a request of National Marine Fisheries Service to bring back to us information on the change that occurred in the uh, bycatch amount um, out of the IPHC annual meeting process uh, for the uh, trawl fishery. So maybe you can elaborate on what exactly your th this bullet entails uh, through the chair yes thank you Ms. R Uremko, for the question um, this reflects back to our request in march under agenda item g1c where we talked about the we were concerned about the difference between the 2023 commercial discard mortality of five fifty thousand pounds and the estimated mortality Discard mortality assumed for 2024 of 110,000 pounds. So we talked about this in March a little bit, and we're just, we'd just like some more information on how that was estimated. Um, you know, that is a significant 
decrease in the FCEY. And we just would like some more information in the interest of transparency and understanding of that. Um, if we could get that information prior to the IPHC meeting in January, that would give some of our GAP attendees and others more information to discuss in January at the IPHC meeting. Marcy? Thank you, Susan. Thank you, uh, Chair Pettinger. Um, appreciate that. I'm moving to item the item regarding the closed area workshops on top of page two, um, you note that you anticipate the participation of at least one GAP member in this workshop. Um, maybe you can elaborate for us about um, what circumstances might um, necessitate attendance by more than one GAP member. I'm, I'm guessing that maybe you're talking about um, the, uh, the scope of the closed area workshop may not yet be clear, but if we're talking closed areas in multiple states, then potentially multiple GAP members might um, need to be included. Is, is my reading that correctly? Yeah, I, well, I think this was more, uh, we were thinking about the SSC's um, statement that will come up under this agenda item. And I think if I recall, I don't have it up on my screen, but I think the SSC was looking for a GAP and a GMT member to participate uh, like they do in the star panels. And we're on board with that. Um, I just think it would also garner a lot of more interest from other GAP members. So just signaling to the council that, you know, other GAP members might like to be, if it's virtual, you know, be online with that. Or if it's in person, you know, I don't know if there's, um, you know, funding to allow for more than one GAP member to travel to that workshop. But just letting you know that there is a lot of GAP interest in this issue. Great. Thank you for highlighting that. Okay. Thank you, Marcy. Further questions for the GAP report? Uh, I don't see any. All right. Hey, Susan. Thank you. All right. Next up will be the Habitat Committee report and uh, Dr. Scott Appel. Scott, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Good morning, members of the Council. I'll be reading from agenda item G4A of the Supplemental Habitat Committee Report 1. Just to do a check to make sure you can hear me okay. We can. Thank you very much. This is the Habitat Committee report on future council meeting agenda and workload planning. The Habitat Committee anticipates a busy workload for the June meeting and would like to highlight some emerging issues for the September meeting. Both the Hell's Canyon Supplemental Environmental Impact Statement and the Dredge Material Management Plan Draft EIS are expected to be completed late April to mid-May. And comment periods are expected to overlap with the June Pacific Fishery Management Council meeting. In addition, the Council will take final action on creating areas close to ground fish fixed gear fishing in areas within the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary to support deep sea coral research and restoration activities. June topics will also include the Committee of the Whole's Operations Priorities Recommendations, Equity and Environmental Justice, Marine Planning, and the report from the Council Coordinating Committee's May meeting. This report discusses the Fisheries Habitat Climate Resilience, Resilience Innovations Workshop held in January. In addition, the Habitat Committee would appreciate celebrating the hard work of Fran Recht, Pacific States Marine Fisheries Commission Rep, the Habitat Committee's former co-chair and longest serving member as she is retiring after the June meeting. For all these reasons, we request an in-person meeting in June as currently scheduled. The Habitat Committee would also like to flag for the Council's attention several habitat relevant issues that will likely arise near or before the September meeting. There are a number of upcoming marine planning issues for which the Habitat Committee typically develops comments, including the draft and programmatic EIS for California's offshore wind leases, the Humboldt Bay Environmental Impact Report for the Deep Draft Terminal Project, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management's proposed sale notice for Oregon offshore wind lease areas, the draft programmatic EIS for Southern California aquaculture opportunity areas, and BOEM's environmental assessment on site assessment and characterization for Oregon offshore wind energy areas areas expected this spring. Uh, number two, the Queets rebuilding plan range of alternatives will be also be considered given the low harvest levels on this stock, non-fishing and habitat impacts may be under consideration. 
That ends the Habitat Committee's report on this agenda item. Okay. Um, questions for Dr. Rappel on the Habitat Committee report? I'm not seeing any. Thank you, Scott. Great, thank you. All right, next up will be the SSC report and Dr. Jason Schaffer. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will be reading from agenda item G4A, Supplemental SSC Report 1. The Scientific and Statistical Committee discussed workload planning and has the following updates to its March 2024 statement. The SSC Coastal Pelagic Species Subcommittee will review the update terms of reference for the CPS stock assessment review process and the accepted practices guideline for CPS stock assessments on April 17th, 2024, during a virtual meeting. The SSC proposes the SSC Groundfish and Economic Subcommittee hold a meeting to discuss methods for the federal state catch proportion analysis in summer of 2024. Prior to application of these methods in the phase two groundfish stock definition analyses, the meeting would require participation from the groundfish management team and the groundfish advisory subpanel. Scheduling is subject to when the analysis and analysts are available. The SSC requests guidance on the optimal timing of this review and the scope of this review to inform Pacific Fishery Management Council decisions. The SSC suggests this could be a virtual meeting. The SSC proposes holding a groundfish methodology review to consider use of the Fourier transform near infrared spectrophotometry for estimating groundfish ages to be utilized in future stock assessments in late summer 2024 at a time and place to be determined. The SSC suggests that this meeting could also be virtual. The SSC ecosystem based management subcommittee proposes a virtual meeting on August 5th, 2024 to review further development of risk tables for groundfish and their application in support of Fishery Ecosystem Plan Initiative 4 to report to the council at the September 2024 council meeting. Anticipated participants include members of the ecosystem work group and the ecosystem advisory subpanel. The SSC groundfish subcommittee will also be invited. The council coordinating Council Coordination Committee's Scientific Coordination Subcommittee meeting will be hosted by the New England Fishery Management Council and will be held during the week of August 26, 2024 in Boston, Massachusetts. Four members of the PFMC SSC with at least one who is an economist and one council staff member are, are expected to attend. The Ecosystem-Based Management Subcommittee proposes a virtual meeting in fall 2024 to review krill indicators in the California Current Integrated Ecosystem Assessment Team's Ecosystem Status Report. As supported by the Council in March 2024, this topic and the risk tables topic were originally envisioned to be reviewed together, but presenters for the krill topic are not available in August. The SSC proposes that the full SSC hold a meeting to discuss phase two stock definition analyses as an extra day added at the beginning of the September SSC meeting in Spokane. The SSC notes that a half or full day meeting may be necessary if three major elements of the phase two are available for review at that time. These include literature review on all remaining undefined groundfish species, updated productivity and susceptibility analyses, and federal state waters catch proportion analysis. If one or only two of these analyses to support these decisions are requiring review in September, a full day may not be necessary. The SSC proposes the SSC Salmon Subcommittee hold a salmon methodology review with, with participation from the salmon technical team and the model evaluation work group in the first week of October 2024, pending selection of final topics and completion of materials at a time and place to be determined. If the council finalizes a list of topics at the September meeting, the review would need to take place during that first week of October to meet the November advanced briefing book deadline. Thus, a short time frame exists between the September council meeting and the methodology review. The SSC proposes the SSC Groundfish Subcommittee hold a virtual meeting to discuss and prepare the accepted practices guideline for groundfish stock assessments in 2025 and 2026 documents in the late fall of 2024 to prepare the final draft document for the council agenda item schedule for March, 2025. The SSC proposes the SSC Groundfish Subcommittee hold a meeting to discuss approaches to deal with large closed areas 
and other spatial issues and stock assessments in 2024 at a time and place to be determined with participation from the GMT and the GAP and subject to analysis being completed and ready for review. The SSE proposes holding a workshop in 2024 on use of remotely operated vehicle data in stock assessments to facilitate inclusion in future ground fish assessments, depending on the proponent's readiness and the provisions of additional information to review by CDFW. This includes review of abundance estimates for coolback rockfish and consideration of methods for integration of results in future stock assessments. The SSC had previously proposed holding a workshop to develop alternative harvest control rules for Pacific spining dogfish in 2024, particularly if Pacific spining dogfish or another elasmal brank species is included in the stock assessment prioritization for 2025 assessments. Given the Council's March 2024 motion regarding the preliminary list of species for assessments in 2025, this workshop could be postponed. However, the preliminary list of species for potential assessments in 2027 does include Pacific spining dogfish, and therefore the SSC notes this workshop would require that an analysis be developed and available to review. The year at a glance summary currently indicates the research and data needs topic is scheduled for preliminary action during the September 2024 Council meeting with final action during the November 2024 Council meeting. The SSC is supportive of moving the preliminary action for this topic to the November 2024 Council meeting with final action during the March 2025 Council meeting based on anticipated SSC workload. And that concludes my statement. Okay. Thanks. Um, that um, questions on the SSC report for Dr. Scheffler. Corey Niles. Yeah, thanks. Um, I have a few questions. Maybe I'll just ask one or two to see if others ask them. But on this um, state versus federal waters analysis, um, the SSC typically just reviews the work of others. Sometimes the subcommittee does some analysis themselves. But do you, who? Who do you anticipate being involved or producing the analysis um, for that review? Our anticipation is the state and NOAA would produce the analyses for the SSC review. Great. Um, yeah. Thank you. I'm on um, the review of the FEP initiative four on the risk tables. I missed it. Um, You'd mentioned ground fish, but I believe the idea we left with last meeting was um, to look at the salmon stoplight tables and whether those could be adapted into something like a risk table. I didn't see your mention of that. Do you have any input there? <clears throat> the SSC proposed that under a potential salmon methodology review. So depending on whether that information is available, completed and available for review, and that could be taken up under the salmon methodology review during October. Okay, Corey, thank you. Anyone else? Corey? Sorry, no one else has any. I was gonna, um, yeah, not, not to, you guys, meant, thanks for being so thorough with all this. The one thing I didn't, notice was we have this um, at the year of the glance we have on November a place where we've been trying to have for a long time to talk about the various CPS science needs um, I was wondering if you all had that was on your radar or um, or not if so have you discussed it <clears throat> We have, the, I, I believe this is coming into the, the research and data needs database, and we have discussed that, and that's one of the, the things that the SSC is trying to get a handle on to, you know, provide more information to the council. All right. Hey, Corey, further questions from the SSC report? All right. Thanks, Jason. All right. Next up will be Dr. Brit Brittany Schwarzkopf and the uh, CPS management team report. Brittany. Hello. 
Uh, Mr. Chair, Council Members, my name is Dr. Brittany Schwarzkopf and I'll be reading from the Supplemental CPSMT Report 1. The CPSMT reviewed um, the year at a glance and the draft June meeting and offers the following for Council consideration. In regard to the central subpopulation of Northern Anchovy Biennial Evaluation, uh, we examined the, the framework. So under the framework, recent average U.S. short-term biomass and catch are evaluated biennially to determine if thresholds have been met that would trigger changes in the current ABC or if a new benchmark should be scheduled the following year. Uh, the CPSMT examined these two metrics and neither of the thresholds were met. So no changes to CSNA management are necessary. We provided the numbers for the calculations if needed for your consideration. Um, additional details can be found in the CPS safe document on the flow chart. And so the CSNA check-in currently shaded for June, 2024 in the year at a glance can therefore be removed, which I saw it already was. Uh, for future meetings based on the draft agenda, we do recommend a virtual meeting for the CPSMT as currently scheduled. However, Looking at the year at a glance, um, especially for November with the stock assessment prioritization and science needs and priorities, we believe these would benefit for an in-person discussion and therefore request that the CPSMT meet in person at the November 2024 council meeting. Thank you. Okay. Um, questions on the CPS management team uh, report? I'm not seeing any. Thank you, Dr. Schwarzkopf. All right, that'll take us to the council member report. Corey, I apologize, I should have had you first. Thanks, Mr. Chair, that's quite all right. Um, I'm not gonna read it into the record unless that's required. I thought I'd just do a quick summary, is that? Okay, thanks. Um, uh, I submitted the report. I just wanted to highlight some issues that we talked about in March and provide a little clarity about my intent. Um, thinking about the fisheries data collection off the coast of California is a large task given the size and diversity of the ecosystem. CDF and W, ODF and W, WDF and W, tribal co managers and NIMS and others routinely and systematically collect data relevant to ground fish fisheries that the PFMC manages, but this collective enterprise can be difficult to understand and use by those who aren't deeply engaged in an everyday way. Um, many people don't know the depth and scope of what is collected and nor how this translates to the management that happens here. Um, I feel that having a comprehensive overview of this data enterprise Focusing on the data that informs stock assessment and management measures would be beneficial towards increasing awareness, transparency, accountability, and understanding of our fisheries data by the council, council stakeholders, and the public, as well as the larger scientific community. I think it'd be most important towards identifying gaps in data collection and help us find out what is missing um, and creating buy-in from stakeholders, the public, and the scientific community. Uh, this isn't meant as a data portal or a data sharing website, but a collation of the different data sets that already exist across entities. Uh, no actual data would be part of this. It would include short descriptions of the data collection, the years, months, or whatever appropriate timing of the collection, uh, and some information on the funding sources. Um, the concept is that it is in a format that is easily understood by the public, the council, and managers. It's presented in a user-friendly platform. Um, along those lines, I think a visual representation of the information would make it easier for the public. Um, in my head, that's something like a, a, a matrix or an easily navigable spreadsheet. Uh, the genesis of this concept came from discussions I've had about quillback and other nearshore groundfish stocks in California and the need to improve how we prioritize data collection. Transparency is important, as is making sure that we as a council are providing helpful advice to CDF and W, NIMS, and others who are already doing a very good job. Um, hopefully, this report could improve stock assessments of individual species in the near shore groundfish stock complex, uh, which are currently limited to data poor or data moderate. Ideally, if this was realized, it could stay, help stakeholders better understand the system thus that it would assist in seeking funding for data collection at the state and national levels. 
would help them better understand the system and how data meets management, and also to have more confidence in our stock assessment outcomes and management decisions, and help grow fishermen collaboration with scientists in collecting data in the future. Um, I center this report on California because this is the need that I best understand, but I think that this would be beneficial as a coast-wide product um, and certainly propose this to other states as something they might may want to be included in as well. Um, I wanted to note that um, I think probably 99% of this data collection enterprise is already publicly available and in some cases is already collated. Um, why is this different? It's different because it seeks to put them all in one place so that there is a complete look that can help identify gaps and guide strategic collection and help the public see those various data streams, what exists and what is missing. Uh, this request is for an initial report, uh, but pending success, I could see this being some sort of living document or something that's produced periodically. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Corey. Um, questions for Corey? Corey Niles. Yes, I get, uh, excuse me, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, thanks, Corey, for the report. And yeah, thank you for reaching out to my agency for, for comment before submitting. I just, is the plan to take this up under discussion? We, we would have thoughts, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, all right, all right. Thank you. What takes your reports? We have one public comment, I believe. Two? Yeah. Okay. What do we got? All right. Teresa Labriola will be first, and followed by Jamie Diamond. Welcome, Teresa. Oh. Good morning, Chair Pettinger. Members of the Council, I'm Teresa Labriola. I'm speaking today on behalf of the Nature Conservancy regarding the Climate Ready Fisheries Collaborative Workshops. Uh, these workshops have been in development with Council input for several years, and I just want to um, give an update to the Council today and, and ask you to consider reaffirming your support for the workshops providing some final input on the focus and consider supporting um, financially state or tribal representatives to attend. And I'm here today because the, we're kind of at a crossroads with our timeline at the Nature Conservancy. And, and um, as many of you know, Gwei Kirchner started this project with the council several years ago. And when she returned to ODFNW, I agreed to try to bring these um, to finalization and the timeline at Nature Conservancy is um, at a at a at a point where we need to finalize the topics and the participation. So, um, I did come over to the budget committee or late last week, and then uh, thought this was the the next best place for the council to have a discussion about this. So, I have some slides just to keep you all awake this morning. Um, next slide. So a little background, uh, the Nature Conservancy and the Council have been working together since 2016 to scope the Climate and Communities Initiative and to host a scenario planning workshop. And these activities, I think, brought the topic of changing ocean conditions and its impact on fisheries and communities um, into the front of mind for many people. Uh, next slide. In March 2022, based on questioning from Council, um, Nature Conservancy solicited funding for two workshops to be held uh, between March and September 2023. And the goal was to add to the overall initiative for um, overall to the to initiative for success. Um, and in March 2023, Nature Conservancy received the funding. And during that meeting, there's there's been council discussions at almost every meeting about this, but the council recognized the value of um, having activities outside of the council meeting space for people to, dis to discuss um, these issues. Next slide. So in June 23, uh, Gwei came forward with two potential workshop topics, including how to utilize risk and stoplight tables in fishery management and identification of species selection criteria. And the council again expressed support for these wor workshops and support for establishing a steering committee, which uh, was then done. Uh, next slide. In September, uh, Nature Conservancy provided a draft agenda in public comment and a schedule for the workshops. And again, there was there was support expressed for this. Um, 
Next slide. Then we came to November and things sort of took a pause. Um, there was still general agreement in the value of the workshops, uh, but there was a request that um, the decision on whether the council could fund um, some participants be postponed until um, IRA funding had come in and there was an opportunity for Nature Conservancy and council staff to discuss what that might look like. So this has put us in a bit of a holding pattern, um, partly because uh, the, the, in that time, uh, Initiative 4 has proceeded and I think some of the workshop topics that were initially planned um, lost a little of their of their um, timeliness, uh, and we've we've moved on with uh, the risk table development without having some of those workshops to help um, uh, advisory bodies understand risk tables. So um, some of those agenda items has, have slowly become not as timely. Uh, next slide. So given this pause in um, March 2024. Um, the council, we looked at the council's discussions from March 2024 to see which, what is most relevant now on the council's mind regarding initiative four. And uh, there was guidance by the EWG and the SSC and about what next steps the council could take um, on initiative four. And specifically, the EWG recommended a meeting to review and prioritize um, CCI follow-up tasks once IRA funds were secured and recommended convening a workshop to identify pathways for inclu including um, fishermen observations in risk tables and so developing risk tables with new information. Next slide. So in the past month, um, the steering committee has taken the history and, and, and said, okay, what are some um, potential topics now, um, and they fleshed out seven topics, which I will not go into all of them. Um, next slide, because two of them sort of rose to the top again. And one of them was a workshop on um, IRA and IRA and CCI coordinating workshop. And the other was one on um, scoping new sources of climate and ecosystem data and ecosystem tools. And um, I call that beyond risk tables. So beyond where we currently are at risk tables. Uh, next slide. So I just wanted to give you a little background on, on the two workshops that the steering committee has started to focus on for your discussion. So the IRA and CCI coordinating workshop um, basically, again, considers the ecosystem work group's proposal to convene a meeting among council bodies Council advisory bodies, science center staff, regional center staff, and council staff to review and prioritize. Um, the, well, review the C, the um, IRA funding, and then see how climate and communities initiative tasks could be incorporated into that. And you know, the council has noted that there are links between the ideas generated in the climate and communities initiative and the projects that the council is requesting funding for. And this workshop would provide a space for people who are engaged in these projects to identify the potential flexibility to incorporate CCI actions, given um, that these are quite time sensitive um, projects. We had uh, scoped a, a meeting uh, time of this summer, potentially in July. And the steering committee thought that the strategic planning meetings like this are most effective in, in person. And um, while the council may have, um, well, the council endorsed the idea of this meeting, which may only be by webinar, we would be able to help the council achieve its goal by facilitating the logistics of the meeting, providing partial funding to pull together um, additional participants um, hosting the meeting and um, hopefully improving the integration of the CCI actions into IRA projects. Um, next slide. Uh, the second workshop, which I call Beyond Risk Tables, um, really looks at you know, the council's endorsement of risk tables, but then looking at what other opportunities there are for incorporating information such as fisheries observations or other sources of climate and community climate in ecosystem information into risk tables. And then discussing what um, other tools we have besides risk tables. Um, they're, 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 risk tables are 
well suited for some species, but may not be well suited for others. And as we ask our um, advisory bodies to explore risk tables in the future, um, th there there may be a need for them to have some uh, flexibility and some some um, opportunities beyond risk tables. So this would help the council to meet its goal of incorporating climate information and science by um, fostering more informed recommendations on how to incorporate this information into management and improving the accuracy of risk tables and providing a platform and collaboration for learning between participants. So uh, next slide. Uh, in summary today, I'm just asking the council again to reaffirm your support for these workshops. Uh, this helps us to, um, if the council is, is supportive of these, it, it helps us get participation from um, um, you know, National Marine Fisheries Service and, and others, uh, stakeholders. Um, we're asking the council to provide your final input on workshop focus and uh, so that we can finalize the planning and the timing of these workshops and to consider financial support for representatives to attend. And um, I understand that the, the council does not yet have IRA funding, but if this is something that you are interested in, in including in that or using that funding for these workshops, that is um, something we would like to hear so we can finalize uh, participant lists. Um, you know, these workshops were initiated based on council discussion, and you know we would like to use these past two years of, of work to to actually come up with a product in collaboration with the council that can help move initiative four forward. So thank you. Sorry, I took so long this morning. There's a lot to say. Okay, thank you, Teresa. A uh, question for Teresa on her, uh, Corey Niles first and then the Mattis. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Teresa, for bringing and laying this out. Um, and on the background, um, I have, Thank you for that thorough reminder of all the times the council's um, expressed support for the idea. I, th I think you may have left one part out, though, to maybe out of politeness. Um, and I don't re I'm not going to pretend to remember this, but had a conversation with you after the budget committee in, I believe it was November of 2022, when Gwei came to this agenda item with the prospects of being able to apply for funding. So we hadn't even gone to the steps of applying and asked if there would be support for that. Um, and we said yes, and then she therefore went forward in an attempt to get the funding. Is that, is that correct? Um, I, I believe that is, I focused on the times when, oh, thank you, Mr. Niles, by the way, <laughs> Chair Pettinger, I focused on times when there were, um, there was written letters in the um, briefing book because I was not the person at the table, but I know that um, that Gwei's solicitation of funds and, and, and grant writing was directly in response to her discussions. And um, her letters reference March, 2022 as the trigger point. Um, and there may have been another discussion between March, 2022 and 23 when she receives funding. Okay, Lynette. Thank you, Chair Pettinger. Thank, uh, thank you, Teresa, for being here and stepping in. Um, the council's loss is my gain, having uh, Ms. Kirchner back working with us with ODFW. Um, you may have said it, and if you did, I apologize. Is there a sunset time on the funding you have? Does it have to be used by a certain date? Thank you, Ms. Madison, Chair Pettinger. Um, the Nature Conservancy has already asked for and received an extension on their grant and are looking to now to finalize the workshops by the close of this year. Thank you, Lynn. Corey Writings. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, <laughs> thanks, Teresa, for this. Um, it, we've we've heard this morning and other points during this meeting and previous meetings about the fact that we do not have IRA funding yet. That is not in our bank account, and therefore we can't really count on it yet. Um, but we have had signals um, that there is some likelihood that that will be coming. Um, in terms of 
TNC's position on this um, is if the counselor discussing these things and decided that there was a desire to support knowing that we do not have that money and cannot guarantee that is if the council gets the money good enough for TNC. Thank you, Ms. Ridings and Chair Pettinger. Yes, I, I think, um, especially when you look at the first workshop, which would be a collaborative workshop on IRA funds and the, the Climate and Communities Initiative, um, that workshop would not take place until the council had IRA funds. And we, we would be able to um, plan for that if the council signaled that they, this was something they were financially willing to um, support um, contingent on funding through uh, the IRA funding. I think we could go ahead and plan those workshops um, with that um, support. So I think a financial support contingent on IRA fundings for one or both of the workshops would um, be adequate at this time. And if IRA funds did not come through for some reason, um, then that first workshop would not happen. So. Okay. Hey, Corey. Um, hey, Director Byrne. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Teresa, I'm looking for a slide, uh, a couple slides back. Uh, it starts with purpose. Yeah, that one. Um, let me see here. The first sub bullet under purpose is identify flexibility to incorporate CCI follow up actions into IRA projects. So the, the IRA project proposals are in the briefing book. And you know, there's some specificity about what those would entail. And I'm, I'm curious uh, what you mean, and if you could go into more detail, what do you envision when you when you when you mention flexibility to incorporate CCI follow up actions? What would that look like? Uh, thank you, Executive Director Burden and Chair Pettinger. Um, I think this is um, you know I, I don't have a crystal ball. I. I I um, think, though, that there are um, potential CCI um, projects that could uh, follow into um, the IRA projects. And I'm sorry, I don't have them in front of me at this moment to, to jog my memory. Um, th there is an opportunity, though, when you think of our Climate and Communities Initiative, and there's 10 or 15 follow-on tasks, and they seem to align um, with the intent of the IRA funds. And so um, I don't have a, a specific example that like CCI task one would fit into IRA workshop one, um, but I think that is exactly the type of brainstorming you would want to have your advisors to come together and consider. And also if there is, um, you know, it's, it's in no way is this workshop um, trying to tell the council what to do, but to help uh, the council, National Marine Fishery Service staff, Science Center staff, recognize what each other is doing and um, seeing if there is an opportunity um, to incorporate the Climate and Communities Initiative follow on tasks into any of that work. Um, if I knew where they would fit, then we probably wouldn't need a workshop. So that's, I think the intent of it is to, is to exactly get the um, minds who are more engaged in this to discuss those, um, those ideas. Okay. Anybody else? Questions for Teresa? Corey and Alice? Yeah, uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Teresa. And you know, as as you know, and just announcing it for others, as I've participated in the steering committee uh, and heard lots of conversations on the ecosystem work group. But you know that where you have so far focused on the IRA projects, the grants, the council, there's some likelihood will get. Yet we have known from the science centers that they have, that particularly the Northwest Fishery Science Center has. A, enough certainty that they've already started started to hire folks. And I think it's um, up to 10 folks to be working on decision support tools for this council and places like the Pacific Whiting Treaty. So uh, have you um, 
you know, in the very low probability, the council gets um, zero dollars for these grants. Um, would would there be value in, in understanding those science center projects and how they could help this council? And have you had any discussions with them directly? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Niles and Chair Pettinger. I have not had a discussion specifically with um, the Science Center staff, although several are on the steering committee. And um, I think maybe what you were just asking was if um, um, if a workshop specifically focusing on NIMS funding itself, even without the council's topics, would be advantageous. And um, I think if I think that is something that the steering committee um, would likely support, just given our, our discussions on um, this opportunity that there are more resources coming into uh, into preparing the the um, uh, the council and NIMS for climate ready fisheries than probably will ever get, and there is an opportunity here that we may never see again to have this much um, time and energy and staff focused on, on something. And if that is um, only a, a, a workshop to help everyone understand what NIMPS is doing, I, I think that is definitely advantageous to um, advisory body members and council and, and um, everyone, you know, every stakeholder here. Okay. All right. So any questions? All right. Thank you, Teresa. Next up will be uh, Jamie Diamond, I believe. <laughs> Jamie. Good you... morning. Yes. Good morning, Chair, Council members, and staff. I'm Jamie Diamond with Stardust Sport Fishing out of Santa Barbara, California. Um, I'm not going to take too much of your time. I just want to um, echo the comments from the Gap in their report. Um, we as the, the sport fishing community strongly support all of their suggestions, especially um, looking forward to seeing the, the closed area workshop come to fruition. Um, very exciting, as well as the ROV workshop. Um, and, and it looks like maybe the possibility of um, being able to process more otoliths over time, that would be wonderful. Um, and I believe a lot of that goes well into um, council member writings report. Um, I greatly appreciated the report and, um, and, and the possibilities um, that could come from it. Her summary was great. And when going through this in my mind, I see this as an opportunity. I mean, right now we need something. And so whatever that comes out as, if it, if it goes through would be great, but the possibility of this turning into something that could work into the new stock assessment prioritization website um, and could be linked with the different things on there showing um, what information of, is available to assess these um, if we have enough, not necessarily that it has to spell it out what we have, but just that there is enough to do, what, what level of information do we have to properly do these assessments. Um, and also seeing what projects, surveys, research, data collection is being done so that those of us that are trying to assist in that, we aren't trying to duplicate things. Um, and I, as Ms. Writing stated, the information exists, but not in one place. And it makes it difficult for, um, for the public side. And I think it would be really useful as, as she stated for this to be um, more of a visual representation of, of what we have, what we don't have, um, and, and who is doing what. And, and I believe that would be incredibly helpful um, going forward. Um, and that way we can identify what, what the needs are and, and also what they aren't. So we aren't spinning our wheels on something that's already being done. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, questions for Jamie on her testimony? All right. I'm not seeing any. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That concludes our public comment. And we're going to take a break for 15.
let's let's make our checkout time right now. So um, if you guys want to get out uh, your stuff, check out. So 50 minutes or say um, 9.35, a little extra time there. We'll come back into discussion.
All right, if everybody take their seats, we'll, we'll start. We'll start back on uh, C6 shortly. C4? C4. Oh, you're the wrong one. <laughs> C4. My bad. <laughs> Something four. Okay. <laughs> it's been a long week. All right. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Executive Director uh, Burton um, and take it from here. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we do have a few matters for consideration and discussion here. So I think in the interest of keeping ourselves organized and efficient in this discussion, I'll encourage us to look at the year to glance first then the quick reference agenda. And then if there's a conversation to be had on the IRA projects, let's have that. And then we have uh, this writings proposal. Uh, I would encourage us to take that up as a fourth matter. So hopefully that structure can work through some work through this systematically and be efficient this morning. Um, so I'm happy to reorient you to the year to glance if that's necessary. I don't know if that's necessary. We did hear some Good comment from our advisory bodies, uh, some of which has already been incorporated into the supplemental materials I previously walked through, but I would encourage us to start there, Mr. Chairman, with the year to glance. Okay, sounds good. Phil Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I had a question on year to glance September meeting underground fish. There's a shaded item title trawl catch share program and intersector allocation review scoping. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering how um, we talked a little bit um, earlier in the meeting uh, when we were discussing as an example, canary rockfish and um, the potential for a future uh, more comprehensive review of our, how we're allocating that between the sectors. And I'm wondering if, if that would fall under this agenda item. Uh, thank you for the question, Mr. Anderson. Um, that item as it's titled is scoping, and I'm sure Kelly has a... Uh, Kelly? Um, oh. Go ahead, I see Kelly was waving her arms. Go ahead, Kelly. <laughs> Through the chair, thank you, Mr. Anderson, for the question. What is noticed on the YAG is for the Amendment 21 formal allocations in the FMP. So as part of the trial rationalization five-year program review, we also review those intersector allocations. Matters like Canary are two-year allocations done in the biennium. So I'd recommend if the council wants to contemplate a deeper discussion on those two-year allocations, that we embed that into our process and timeline for developing the next biennial regulations. Okay. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Corey? I, I believe Lynn was first, to be fair, but I'm at a better angle. <laughs> you are. Uh, thank you, Chair Pettinger. Um, on the HMS, in the HMS row, the November column, um, there's a shaded item on FMP amendment to remove drift gill net gear. Um, in our delegation this morning, it was brought up that is that just a that's just a placeholder, um, and might, will likely get moved farther out so we don't lose it. We're not anticipating anything being available for November. It's just a placeholder until we have something ready. Is that the correct understanding? Uh, thank you, Ms. Mattis. Um, I guess a couple of thoughts here. One is, um, as we all know, uh, this year will be phased out and we do need to go through an amendment process. Uh, so that exact date is escaping me at the moment, 2027. Um, so, you know, it does take some time to do an FMP amendment. 
I guess I would look at uh, Mr. Wolf to see if there's any uh, information coming from NIMS that would help us inform that item. Uh, otherwise, I do think there's some flexibility in when exactly we schedule that, but we don't want it to get lost. But maybe Mr. Wolf has some comments. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Mayor, and thanks, Ms. Menes, for the question. Yeah, I raised this actually at the March workload planning discussion with, and made that same comment that this was initially put on back then, which was November, uh, which was the end of the YAG at that point, um, at, at the last November meeting, uh, as a placeholder, uh, just to remind us that we needed to do that. Uh, but it's it's not just 27, it's December 2027 that maybe that has to happen. So we have some time and and... I think it's fine to have it shaded for a placeholder, but I do think uh, the intent was to keep it on our radar as opposed to tee it up for this year. Thanks. Okay. Corey? Yeah, my, I, if my comment was back on what the topic Phil was speaking to, so I don't know if you wanted to continue with that, if there's any other comments on that one item. What do you, what do you got? Well, on Phil's question about we had the same it sounded like it would be we need a, some more time than available than the normal biennial process to talk about these two-year allocations particularly for canary and so we were thinking of just putting on the out on the air to glance on april but i don't know if, if kelly had a better idea but um if i if i'm maybe taking phil's thoughts too far but we thought putting that on the agenda for a specific discussion um is worth doing for sure Okay. All right. Phil? So, uh, I just, I did this. Well, I don't need to ask it right now, I guess, except my time's running out. Um, I th thought the reason we didn't include canary along with several other species in the trawl kit share and the intersector allocation part of that was because it was under rebuilding. And I'm wondering, I guess my question is, does the council have the ability to add species that are covered under that amendment or is the plan, uh, if it wasn't included in it that from here on forward that those species that weren't included are going to be under this every two year uh, allocation um, decision that's associated with our biennial specs process. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, I think I take your uh, question uh, uh, as maybe more of a point, uh, but either way, I, I see what you're uh, getting at. Um, when I think of this uh, agenda item, intersector allocation scoping, I, I can easily envision one of the questions we ask ourselves as part of that scoping, which is what species are being allocated. This is, that would be in a FMP amendment process. I think that's one of the purposes of scoping. So if that's a question the council wants to raise in that step, I, we can easily raise it. Court. Well, and I think there's two questions then of do you want to make it a more permanent allocation or if it's continue to be a two year, is there a way to improve how we do that as part of the biennial process? And so perhaps you could fit both those questions in either if they're in the scoping or somewhere else. And so that would be the request to staff to think about where, where we have those two conversations. Um, thank you, Mr. Niles. I, I'm not sure I'm taking your point. Could you <laughs> explain that a little bit more? Yeah. So, Phil, there's the question of whether to keep it as a two, like a species like canary. Do you want to keep it part of the two-year process or not, or make it longer term per Amendment 21? If you, so that's one question. Second question. Based on the experience we had with canary and other species this year for two year allocations, is there a way we could, we are, we're seeing a need for some discussion on how we fit those into the biennial steps better? Because <laughs> this time around, 
we set the alternatives in November without much analysis. The analysis was done after November. Stakeholders discussion happened after November with our you know recreational stakeholders primarily, and then came back after those discussions and dialogue and learning. And then the reaction we got in April was it's too late to oversimplify it. So we would like to look at that. You know, Canary is not the only one. I think CDFW said they're feeling similar about species like vermilion. So is there a way to do that better? Is a separate discussion on whether it should be made a permanent allocation, non-trawl, trawl split type thing. Oh, Kelly? Thank you, Chair Pettinger, and, and thank you, Mr. Anderson and Mr. Niles. I think we understand the challenges that you're highlighting, and if I could, I would just suggest that maybe we get our best ground fish brains together. They could put forward a proposal on a process for addressing this consideration that takes into account the existing intersector allocation process, as well as this proposal for maybe a discussion in April of 2025. We could bring that forward maybe at the June or September meeting under workload planning. Corey? Perfect. Thanks. That's all good. Okay. Marcy, you're up. Go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm not sure. I, I don't know that I disagree with uh, Ms. Ames' suggestion, but I would just note that we have um, done some allocation shifts for a number of species over the past two or three bienniums. Um, we've dealt with lingcod, we've dealt with widow. Um, <clears throat> all in the specs process. And we were very, I think, fortunate and grateful that we had the flexibility in the specs process to be able to consider those shifts at that time in that process. It allowed us to better share and better utilize uh, across available sectors in response to um, changes in conditions <coughs> or changes in status, or not status, but um, available ACL. So I, I don't know why we'd ever put a species back into Amendment 21 um, with a more permanent um, allocation that we don't revisit um, as periodically. But if Kelly is suggesting some kind of report on that concept, um, I guess if this agenda item is the place for it, then okay. But I would just note that um, at least discussions with NIMS, they were very open to um, allowing the flexibilities that we've been utilizing in the specs process um, for species as as needed and as we've identified those needs in a in our specs process. Nope. <laughs> Um, thanks uh, for that, uh, Marcy, and and I'm appreciate that you have been able to be successful utilizing the two-year specs process for allocation issues associated with species such as you suggested. We, we have not been uh, relative to canary, and so we're trying to figure out how we can get the discussion in front of the the, the decision relative to specs. So that we're not, because we've in the last two cycles now, we've attempted to try to bring that matter forward. And just the way that the timing of the specs process is, uh, we haven't been able to get that kind of comprehensive discussion. So we're trying to figure out how to do that. And um, so I think um, Kelly's suggestion is a good one from my perspective to bring it back so we can kind of see how what 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 kind of a process might we use between the spec cycles to get that kind of conversation and analysis that's needed in order to make an informed decision. Okay. Marcy, thank you. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Corey. So one last thing on the other glance for us, just um, 
on the November on the CPS. Um, where is November? It's down here. The uh, I am not there. It's in the middle. On the on that bit, we'll just you know what I'm gonna on the science needs on the top. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Is <laughs> the stock assessment uh, part the science needs and priorities item? I know that's kind of it's a new one. So the question, Merrick, is um, and I asked the SSC about their plans. Didn't get a chance to ask the MT or the AS or the science centers about how they're planning on engage, engaging. So I'm wondering if um, that that one seems to me like there should there be a little prep work, which I know that you all at staff are working on. But maybe um, just, you had thoughts on that, or maybe we could flag it for June workload planning, just laying out some expectations for what that one might look like, because um, it does, again, seem some lead time to make that discussion successful would be good to think about. Um, yeah, thank you, Mr. Niles. We have had a few conversations internally about how to tee that item up. Um, and so I, I guess the way that I I view the way our work unfolds is that we'll be uh, happy to have a conversation with you in June about it again. Uh, the staff officers then tee up our advisory bodies, um, help them understand their role and their task. Um, and what we're envisioning right now is um, well, our CPS folks and Kelly and I have talked about a discussion paper to tee up, you know, some history and where we're at with CPS and uh, how that how that'll feed into the prioritization of science needs. Um, also had a chance to talk with, uh, you know, uh, Southwest Center leadership about this item and they're curious about it. So there's a few conversations that we need to have and coalesce uh, our brains around this item. And um, I'm confident that we will get there. I think there's some really good thoughts, but uh, putting this off to November, just what we have to do given workload challenges at the moment. So. Corey writings. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, thanks, other Corey, for bringing that up, um, and Merrick for your response. I think, Mike, I have a similar question that is on that agenda item. Um, you know, earlier this week, talking about the sardine stock assessment and thinking about both. There are science needs and priorities. There are also management needs. Um, and we discussed some of that under that agenda item. So I'm wondering if you can elaborate a little bit more on the science needs and priorities. Sounds pretty sciencey to me, but I'm wondering if you're thinking about that in terms of there'll be opportunities to discuss management as well, or whether maybe this is the first part of a two-step process, just trying to get a little more um, little more clarity on what's envisioned in that. And I just heard you say that we'll talk about this in June, um, but anything additional along the lines of whether there'll be <clears throat> management discussions as part of that would be helpful. Um, yeah, thank you for the question. Um, well, I'm happy to take your input now too. I'm just thinking we'll have another chance in June uh, to, to discuss this. Um, where this came from, uh, I believe, was that you know we've had um, well, every year we do, you know, assessments on sardine and we haven't had a sardine fishery for some time. And that's raised some questions in the background. Just, is this the best use of our science enterprise now, given it's stretched so thin? And perhaps it is. Um, then we've had questions now about Japanese sardine. Uh, perhaps this is what you're getting at with management implications. Uh, obviously the presence of Japanese sardine raises questions like our Pacific sardine getting displaced. Um, is there something else happening and how do we respond to that? Uh, so those are obvious management questions that start with science. What does the science tell us? Um, and then there's a question of whether we have one stock or two stocks of Pacific sardine, maybe even more. Uh, I don't know if that's, there's more people are asking that question, but, um, question exists about stock structure and how we manage uh, our current sardine stock. Um, and as you'll recall, we had a workshop a couple of years ago and um, the outcome of that, I guess my takeaway was, uh, was a little bit inconclusive. Uh, so all of that raises the question, where should we be focusing our limited science enterprise so that this body can make management decisions? Um, I think that's what's implied is that we're using science here to support the management decisions of the council. So in my mind, that's how the council will help 
the science center identify their priorities is what are the management challenges that we believe exist? Uh, what are the science, um, what sort of scientific information should we be looking for to help make those decisions? So there are several, several questions. So hopefully I'm answering your question. Yeah, thanks for that. That that's definitely helpful. Um, I guess just a very brief follow up thought on that is just noting that, <clears throat> yeah, from that workshop that you mentioned, Merrick. You know, there it seems like there's some in, can't use the word inconclusivity about the two stock one stock question. Um, but we are currently managing as if there's two stocks, and and that's an issue. Um, I think for both conservation and management. So just noting, and I agree with you, the, I think a, a deeper science look is warranted and seems to be recommended. Um, just noting that there are kind of those two separate issues there. So look forward to following up on that uh, in June and then hopefully looking forward to see what comes out of that agenda item later this year. Hey, Mark. Just uh, one, one more thought. Um, what I, what I like to do on items like this where it uh, seems a little bit open-ended is I'll ask a staff officer to draft a, a white paper, a discussion paper, which is more thorough than a situation summary. So that's what we're envisioning here. And uh, you know, I've been talking with Jesse uh, quite a bit about this. And then of course, Carrie has a long history with CPS. And so uh, that discussion paper then helps you all to organize your thoughts helps give the advisory body something to focus on and then gives rise to, you know, usually a coalescing of a series of recommendations. And so that's what I'm envisioning here in terms of a process. Um, I, I wouldn't ask us to sit here and identify ahead of time what what is needed before we have that paper to, to build off of. So that's what we're planning on for November. Hey, John, John, you there? Yeah, thanks. And since this is the first time I've spoken, I'll check my mic. You're good. I see your hand All there. Right. So, yep. Thank you. Um, yeah, and uh, I appreciate this discussion. If there is some sort of staff paper, I would highly recommend that uh, they look back into the meeting history and the various discussions on this topic that have occurred. What I'm hearing now is a somewhat of a shift. Um, I think there have been lots of council discussions and input on what's needed, and I look forward to seeing what's planned, but not making any final decisions until we get better input on that and ability to discuss it. I would also point out that if this is discussed at June, CPS is barely on the agenda. Um, so we just need to have plenty of time in advance to get information to discuss. Okay. Thank you, John. Lynn Mattis. Uh, thank you, Chair. Since we're on the CPS topic here, I'll have other things to say when we get more into ground fish. Um, November may seem like a long ways off, but to try to help with some planning and preparation, the CPSMT did request to be in person in November. Uh, was wondering if we have any update on those plans or um, potential for that. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question, Ms. Mattis. Um, uh, we don't have a formal update on that. Uh, I would tie this to our uh, June uh, budget, operational budget adoption. Uh, as part of our, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Provisional budget um, that was adopted in November. We do have a series of uh, plans for remote versus in-person attendance. Um, so I'd want to you know, couch any change in our remote versus in-person attendance in that discussion. I, I don't think it's a major ask. Our CPS groups are not large, um, but uh, I would just like to make sure we're being diligent with our finances and uh, make sure that that's part of that discussion in June. Thank you, Liv. All right. All right. Yeah, sorry, not to that point, just a couple other comments on the ag, if, if you're ready for that. Um, the gap requested, uh, and I think there was some back and forth under their report regarding the halibut bycatch request. I appreciated the clarification that we got um, uh, from the gap and, and when they presented their report. So that's something that NIMS can uh, bring back most likely in September. 
Um, and then I thought, heard, and please the council here can correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought there was maybe some discussion um, during the gear switching agenda item uh, of having the regs being brought back um, in the deeming process uh, for the council to be able to see those, uh, if that is the council's desire, um, it'll probably be relevant to shade maybe in March on the year at a glance. Um, for now, um, obviously we just completed that action. We haven't even identified our staff on this and we'll be able to report out as we uh, at future um, council meetings under our names reports, how we're doing on staffing and been, be a little bit more accurate on timing at that point. Um, and then lastly, I'll just note that uh, I understand the shaded phase two stock definitions, final action in April. Um, obviously, support that and that process. I just want to put a placeholder here. I mean, I think it is, it, it's near the end of the YAG. I'm sure it's shaded also uh, to remind us of that important final action. But uh, I know we'll discuss council operations and priorities at, at length at the next two meetings. Um, but just from my name's perspective, I um, would like to just put a placeholder down to it's nice to see a potential April, um, at least once every two years, that maybe we might be able to not have a groundfish uh, agenda. I, mean, I know that's something will be discussed elsewhere, but so just flagging that at this point. Um, and those are the comments that NIMS has on my year to glance. Thanks. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. Orsi? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I have a couple of comments on a few of those same topics um regarding the nymphs um update to the council on halibut bycatch i guess i'm having trouble understanding why this will take any time i mean it happened it happened very quickly all of a sudden the number was increased and we weren't informed in California, that was a loss of 1,300 pounds. For us, every pound matters, and that's a significant reduction in the amount of allowable opportunity we have in 2024. I, I'm struggling to understand why we need to wait until September to get briefed on what happened. So I'm hoping maybe NIMS can come up and, or can provide us something in NIMS report sooner than that. Um, I was hoping we might hear about it this meeting, but we, we didn't. Um, so I would just note that I, I, maybe there isn't a halibut item in June that would be appropriate to bring that to us. But, um, I would just think that a ground fish nymphs report item would work just as well. Um, regarding the, uh, Gap's comment on the in-season flexibility item for halibut that is uh, shaded for September and November. The Gap recommends <laughs> removing this item. Um, I would ask that we keep it shaded for the moment. It's, the agenda item is already there for um, commercial fishery reg changes. Um, I'd like to continue to show that language of in-season flexibility, at least until the next uh, agenda planning discussion. Um, as I recall, where we left the halibut items uh, last November, we did recommend in-season flexibilities that now will exist for um, potential check-ins on <laughs> recreational um, allocations under the CSP. But um, I think we certainly have some intention in talking further about what flexibilities, what other flexibilities might be developed and included into future catch sharing plans. Um, whether the time is right now or later, but, um, you know, this was something that was we, we couldn't cover um, in discussions last year. Um, we narrowed the scope to only recreational so um, I think there's still some work that might be worth doing here. So at least for the moment, I would support maintaining the in-season flexibilities. Um, Want to talk to the non-agenda items that the gap has identified. Um, 
if I may, on the um, workshops that are proposed, the uh, closed area workshop and the uh, ROV workshop, and uh, they are showing as italicized in the SSCs uh, table that they've provided us, meaning they are um, flexible or um, preliminary uh, at this time, and just highlight the critical importance of uh, particularly the ROV workshop and um, the uh, review or the inclusion of an abundance estimate for quillback rockfish that we're hoping comes out of um, the ROV analysis and subsequent review. So I want to um, acknowledge the gaps, support for these two workshops, the closed area and the ROV, and their note that um, they anticipate participation of at least one gap member in this workshop. It's unclear at this point whether these workshops are going to be virtual or in person, but I would just note that um, both ROV and closed area items are likely to include uh, discussions um, from more than one state. And we would hope that gap representation um, would reflect that. Thanks. Thank you, Marcy. All right. Anybody else? Oh, Merrick? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, Thank you, Mr. Remco, for those comments. Uh, thinking about these workshops, uh, certainly some very good information could come of those. Uh, what I'd like to do is um, also roll those into our June budget discussion. Uh, we have a lot of requests for workshops and extra funding, and right now we have a million dollar deficit out of a $5 million budget. So I wanna be very diligent about what we're spending our money on. Um, so I, I've made note that uh, you've expressed interest uh, in those workshops, and I would just like to fold that into our budget discussion before uh, we uh, start to approve those types of efforts. Okay. All right. Must be on the hands, Mark. So move on to the next. Yeah, uh, yeah, I would, uh, if that's it on the year at a glance summary, I would like, or I would encourage you all then to shift over to the quick reference agenda for June with some added specificity. Um, and also, of course, relevant to June is the uh, HMS workshop is being planned for the two days prior. Um, so happy to take comments, questions, suggestions from you all on the quick reference at this point. Mark Rilnick. Yeah, I want to withdraw my earlier comment about um, discussion of membership appointments because I didn't appreciate we had a longer time on day one. So I think I think as I sit here right now, I think that that may be enough time. And if we go a little bit over on day one, we can make it up. John Ugerts. Thanks, and thanks, Merrick. Um, with regard to the HMS workshop and two days prior, can you can you just uh, elaborate on specifically which days those are so we can get things on the calendar? Uh, certainly, um, and just to orient you to the uh, supplemental material, the supplemental quick reference agenda, uh, what we've started to do on the far left-hand corner, far left-hand column rather, is to make note of uh, other meetings. Uh, and so this is contained there and you'll see uh, online meetings that are relevant contained there also. So uh, we have uh, June 6 and June 7 uh, currently planned for that workshop and we have arranged arrangements with the hotel to host that. We have identified a facilitator. So at this point, those uh, dates are set. Thank you very much. I did not see it there. <coughs> okay. Lynn Mattis. 
Uh, thank you, Chair Pettinger. Um, we'll have several things on this one, if that's okay. Um, first off, thank you to Kelly and Merrick for um, preheating the gap in GMT's request for the extra day um, in June so that they can be here for those key ground fish agenda items. Um, I know many of some of our GMT members and most of our gap members don't live in communities with airports and have a fair bit of commute. So appreciate thinking about their being able to participate as well as safely get home. And I hear a cell phone, does the, uh, the Anderson rule still work? <laughs> um, the GMT in their report um, asked for several places for some specific guidance. Um, I've been communicating with via email with my counterparts to the North and South um, for, the June agenda, uh, we believe that uh, F6, the biennial EFPs and management measures should be their first priority. F, uh, F7 in season, priority number two. F4, stock definitions, range of alternatives, number three. F3, final stock assessment in terms of references, uh, four. And then a cross FMP item if they still have capacity and time to be H3 council operations and priorities. Uh, not expecting the GMT to need to weigh in on the NIMS report, the coral restoration FPA, or fixed gear marking and entanglement FPA. Uh, those items don't seem like they have any nexus for GMT management analysis at this point. So trying to help them prioritize their workload. They also asked for some specific guidance on their uh, the work they're going to be doing over the next month on the buy-in and harvest specifications, uh, particularly in regards to Quillback rebuilding plan and short spine thorny head management measures. Quillback uh, rebuilding plan seems like it's it should be the highest priority. Um, none of the current GMT members, nor I don't think any of the council staff members or many of us who are currently involved in the process have done a rebuilding plan in a long time or ever. Um, we've been lucky we haven't had to do a rebuilding plan in a while. So I don't want all of the onus, all of the burden to fall solely on the GMT. I'm hoping that there are some resources to help them, whether it be council staff, NIMS staff, science center folks. I don't want them to feel like they're alone in this endeavor as it's something they have not done and it could be a very large item for them. Then after Quill, after Quillback, if there is still work to do on short spine thorny head management measures, I think they've done a lot of work and are pretty close, um, but that would be the next priority uh, in what I'm seeing. The, based on what we did yesterday, I don't know that there's any other new or emerging items. It's just should be just cleaning up the rest of the regular work. So hopefully that guidance helps the GMT in planning their work for the next couple of months. Um, so thank you for letting me speak to those. Thank you, Liv. Okay. Anybody else? Well, we've done a good job. Bert? Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and council members. Uh, if that's it for the uh, agenda planning discussion, I would, uh, I guess, invite any comments you may have on the IRA proposals or the IRA projects. And I'm getting a note that we might have a hand up too. So maybe we're not moving on. Oh, there is. Yep. yep. John, regrets. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and thanks, Merrick. Sorry, one more item under CPS. I, I just would note that in terms of logistics and planning and budget that we have a single one hour CPS item on Monday, June 10th. I don't know that that is a necessarily time critical item and would propose that it be moved to a later meeting when CPS is there. We can get better input um, from advisory bodies and whatnot in person. So um, I would just suggest removing that from June and moving it to a later meeting. Okay. Mark. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John. I appreciate that suggestion. Um, got a shrug from Kelly, which means that's probably doable. So, um, so you're just looking around. Oh, I 
maybe we're not done here. I see hands going back up. So back to you, Mr. Chairman. Corey. I didn't mean to interrupt you there, Merrick, but maybe a question for John um, on this idea of preparing for the uh, November science priority needs meeting, um, convening the, the team and advisor sub panel in June was maybe one place where they can do, but are you envisioning that could be done later via <coughs> webinar meeting? John? Thanks, and thanks, Corey, for the question. Uh, yes, I think uh, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me to expend time and energy and funds to bring CPS staff together in June when they have nothing else on the agenda. So, yes, I would propose that all of that be handled remotely later. Thank you, John. And Corey? All right. No, I'm not seeing any hands. Okay, Bert. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, let's see if that's it on agenda planning. Uh, I would encourage us to shift gears and uh, discuss um, IRA project management. Um, we did have, uh, at your request, we have included the two, sorry, rather three IRA proposals that uh, were submitted at the end of January. They're in your briefing book. Uh, we also did hear a uh, public comment from Ms. Teresa Labriola about TNC's uh, offer to help assist the council. Uh, if you're still uh, willing to entertain that, I think that could benefit from, from some discussion. Uh, so I would encourage us to shift gears and take that up at this time. Okay. Krista. Thank you. Um, just to get the conversation started, uh, I think we've done quite a lot of work around um, the CCI initiatives, which led into these uh, proposed workshops. And I, I am supportive of the workshops, whether they go through the council process, um, they have offered to host them. Um, and I do think it would be beneficial to get them directional in whatever decision we're making. We may not have the funding right now, um, but sometimes it's easier to say, yes, provided we get the funding, uh, we're going to commit to sending state or tribal members. If we don't get it, obviously that's off the table rather than to kind of keep holding them on the line. So I, I would be supportive of um, moving forward with this and uh, would be interested in other people's thoughts around it. Corey Yeah, thanks. I feel similar, similar. I don't even know why I ever try to say that word. I feel similarly. Um, but yeah, uh, I feel like this count, we, the council has been supportive of this and even, you know, requested that Nature Conservancy take the step of applying for the grant. Um, Merrick, I've heard you at the budget committee and today say we have a lot of a lot of asks for workshops and you'd ideally like to take them up in June. Um, what I heard from, from Teresa, you know, was maybe a contingent yes would be enough to continue their planning. Um, but yeah, if I do respect what you say about the budget and the uncertainty in the IRA funds, um, but just to acknowledging that and wanted to know if you had had thoughts of um, trying to meet, well, not, not to cut off the, the viewpoints of others, but I, you know, those of us support it, we want to hear the realities of the budget and um, your thoughts there. I uh, appreciate the comments. Um, I, uh, I, I can talk about budget for quite a while. I, I'm actually going to start at a different place, though. Um, I, uh, I, am, I really appreciate the offer from the Nature Conservancy to help. Uh, I personally have no qualms about partnering with an NGO or a trade association if that helps the, this council advance what it's trying to do. Um, I, I admit I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm struggling with uh, really what happens if we do these workshops and how it helps us. And uh, I could use some um, articulation of that vision from those of you that are supportive. Uh, what's going through my head is um, uh, 
uh, as is the case for any any time the council launches a, an initiative, uh, staff you know take steps to organize our thoughts around how we're going to carry out and uh, engage in the work. That often leads to coordination with other agencies that we partner with, uh, often coordination with advisory bodies. Uh, these are things that we do. And um, a workshop format is usually beneficial for uh, ideation or problem solving or, you know, things that take uh, take some machinations of, of smart minds to come up with uh, some way to solve problems. And so I've got a couple of questions then, which is uh, generally these types of coordination activities are things that we do anyway, and that I view as a core job of council staff. And two, I'm not sure what we're workshopping. Um, and so maybe there's an answer in there and I'm just not seeing it yet. Um, but my response to your question about budget, Mr. Niles, kind of depends on that. So if there's a if there's a purpose and a clear activity that's happening, that helps me think more about what and how we are engaging. And that still is elusive to me. Um, I, I could see us throwing resources at it, but uh, I'm not sure what, what we would gain uh, that's different from what we already do. So um, if you have that vision, I would appreciate hearing what that is. Corey? Yeah, well, I'll just give my vision, Merrick, and um, as a long term from beginning with the ecosystem plan development team, participant of the ecosystem process, the, ch the challenge Teresa said it is there's not enough time at council meetings for the advisory bodies to um, have the bandwidth to take up these, what I think you um, rightly call sometimes, you know, strategic big sky, blue sky, whatever it is type thinking. Uh, so that's, that is the one um, major benefit of it brings together the people that participate in this process, um, where that is the only thing they have to think about for that particular day or whatever day and a half. And yeah, just it's time and time again, it's always we try to get the, on the ecosystem work group, we try to facilitate moving these ideas into the normal FMP processes, but it's just people on the advisor bodies have um, like the GMT, for example, just overloaded. Very happy to hear the SSC say that the um, salmon stoplight risk table thing was moved into the their methodology review. That's exactly an example of how this is supposed to work. Um, yeah, so I think the vision, and I'm thinking particularly of the IRA, focus project but there's similar benefits from the risk table ones is just giving people time to have those discussions absent other items needing taking up and then you know other people who don't necessarily get involved in the process also participate and then provide a report you know their tangible outcome is a report to the council of what was discussed you know less tangible i guess is just your, your, the people who participate in this process from the stakeholders to the government folks are also learned from the interactions. Um, and yes, I'll close it up here, but the, on this IRA funding project, yeah, we know that council staff and the region and the science centers are all talking. Um, but yeah, the, the, the strength this council process is bringing everyone else into those discussions, the advisory bodies, the public, uh, management teams, technical teams, SSC members. And yeah, we have, I think Teresa said it nicely, uh, maybe we'll, maybe the, the most resources we've ever seen focused on making our fisheries sustainable over the long term through climate change. Um, and I think you get better results when the conversations are coordinated with the council process rather than happening just by in the science centers themselves in particular. So I think those just the Northwest Center, again, getting 10 folks to work on decision support tools. And, and I know just being part of the EWG and talking to those folks that they would love to hear more from the council advisors on what those tools could do. And I believe that's, I'll just, I'll, I think that's, that's my, that would be my pitch and where I see the value. Uh-huh. 
Got another one. <laughs> Bring plenty of milk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With that, Corey. <laughs> um, on that don't any note, um, <clears throat> I just want to echo what other Corey just said. That all sounded right to me. Um, likewise, I'm on the steering committee, so have been privy to more of the inside discussions here and thinking that's uh, come from that group. Um, thinking about the two that Ms. Labriola proposed this morning, um, talking about the first one, the IRA and CCI coordinating workshop. Um, I, I just think coordination is really valuable. And I think we're going to get a lot more bang for our buck if we're able to take advantage of the additional resources that TNC is offering to bring to the table. Um, this is including more stakeholders, more tribes, people from states. We're hearing from the various states that everyone's under sort of a budget shortfall and that attendance may not be possible. So adding some extra time and capability and money to help bring more people to the table than would necessarily be able to happen under sort of normal, already stretched thin, already very heavy council workload, uh, I see as being very beneficial. Um, I think that... Uh, Corey brought up a really good point about the 10 people. Teresa brought a good point about these resources. Um, if I recall correctly, I'm going to get my number a little bit wrong, uh, but that IRA funding, besides just going to the councils, you know, there's something like $300 million um, going to NIMS and they're hiring 10 people. And it's um, great to see that. Uh, but it's also really important that the science and the thinking and the tools, the management tools that they're doing is responsive to this council. Uh, perhaps that's a bit selfish, but um, I would like to see that as used as synergistically as possible with the council. And I um, echo in discussions that I've had with the IEA folks and ecosystem folks and climate scientists over um, at the NIF side of the house as they're thinking about how to move forward you know, they have a very strong desire to do the same thing. And I think that's great to hear that they want to be responsive to council need um, across FMP agenda items. So um, I think having the extra space, having this be timely, um, being able to relieve council funding issues around this uh, is on balance um, worth it. Um, I'm thinking about the beyond risk tables as well. Uh, from my understanding specifically, this workshop isn't necessarily hooked to the IRA money or the IRA proposals that the council has put forward. Um, it's a follow-up to a lot of the climate work that the council's done over the past five, six years, and specifically some of the discussions that were had in the first part of the council's discussions on initiative four. Um, so it could bring uh, more richness to that process. It could help us with our initiative four goals. Um, and like I said, is not tied to the IRA, um, the IRA proposals or the money specifically. So um, yeah, I hope that's that probably repeated Corey and Teresa a little bit there, but that's where I think it's value add and uh, is worth a, a relatively small council investment to hopefully get a, a lot of bang for our buck uh, over the next two, five, 10 years. Okay, Corey, thank you. Um, uh, John Ugras, John. Yeah, thanks. And um, thanks, Corey and Corey, for that. Uh, I, I, dis I don't disagree with what you're saying. I, I appreciate the ability to add value through outside funds. I am still concerned and want to raise specifically the concern about this sort of matching funding that TNC is asking for in, in the amount of 15 people for travel. That is not insignificant. I, I understand that that might be budgeted for, but I, I just, you know, we keep talking about how overstrapped we are in terms of both time and money. And at a minimum, an additional workshop is addis additional time for all of the people involved. And at most, it's it's a significant amount of money. So I'm fine if uh, 
the executive director feels that there is council budget for this, but I don't want that to come at the cost of something else. Thank you, John. Uh, Marcy? Yeah, thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Chair. And it's at the cost of something else point that John just made is exactly what yeah. I am concerned about. Um, here we're, I, I thought we heard from the executive director that we are unable to consider um, our capacity for future workshops. And by future, that means near term um, until we have uh, refined information on budget uh, in June. Um, one other workshop idea that's been percolating now since uh, November is the potential for reviewing our um, data moderate stock assessment methods. And I thought we had um, suggested that we convene a group of uh, folks from Center of Independent Experts to help us with that question to ensure that our processes for our stock assessments were um, and our COPs were uh, serving us effectively. I can't think of something more important. So I just have pretty grave concerns with making one kind of spin-off decision here with regard to workshops that I don't see on the SSC's list of potential workshops. And I guess I would just leave it at that. Thank you. I'm doing. No. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Corey Nelson. Yeah, I guess. Well, thanks, John and Marcy. I not disagreeing um, in full, but this council made a commitment already, starting in March of 2022, at the if not earlier, to even to support these. So this is not new and Teresa did a nice job of documenting all the times we said, yes, we support that. Um, yes, this will be relevant. Um, so I would propose we make a, a contingent. Yes, we are interested, but we want to hear more about the IRA funding. I mean, whether, you know, when, it, if it comes in in May, um, the contingent on those funds and other room in the budget, I, 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 I don't see how we wouldn't have, we do have the million dollar deficit, but we could be getting additional, you know, over $3 million for this IRA funds um, over the next month. So I don't know how we back off our support um, and consistently saying yes, and then, and then stringing people along like this. And then maybe we'll never want this opportunity again, but we, if, we, if we do this, we won't get this opportunity again. John, you there? Yeah, thanks. Um, I do disagree quite vehemently with what Corey just said, and, and I didn't bring it up when Teresa said it. Yes, the council has contingently supported the idea of these workshops over many years. Each time we've done that, we have had questions. We have had lack of clarity and we have had concerns about funding that has not changed um and so yes again I, I don't disagree with the concept of the workshops but if it comes at the cost of something else then i question the priorities um and yes while the ira funding will bring significant amounts of money into this council if it is received if that money is used for new activities, it doesn't offset any of our deficit. And so I, I think we continue to support the concept, but it is contingent and that we need clarity. Thank you, John. Corey Writings. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, thanks. Uh, Mr. Ugaretz, I just wanted to respond in thinking about this kind of the concept of offsetting the deficit. Um, you know, I think the intent, especially beyond the on the first workshop, the IRA and CCI coordinating workshop, is really in hopes that if we do a good job and do a thorough job of coordinating <laughs> with the National Marine Fishery Service up front early in the process of getting the CCI money, which are 
for the three proposals um, that we can build and use that money and use those NIMS resources more efficiently in terms of how we're moving forward with the work this council's already done when thinking about the long-term effects of climate change. You know, the, the council put a lot of work into thinking about the how climate is affecting the work that we do and the fisheries that we manage. And I'm thinking about all the things that came out of the <coughs> climate communities initiative, the scenario planning. You know, we did a lot of hard work to come up with essentially a laundry list of things that we can help, um, things that we can do. And those are, a lot of them are FMP specific that will go in and to strengthen how we do our FMP specific management. So to the extent that a preliminary workshop can bring that thinking, the thinking that the council's already done, capitalize on that and help encourage NIMS for what they do with their 10 people, their $300 million to direct that to be able to help improve how we're doing our management through our FMPs. To me, that is an efficiency. Hopefully it's a cost savings over the long run um, and can help with that deficit over the long run. Okay. Um, a couple of people for it, a couple of people spoke against it. And I think we probably need some clarity on this, what we're gonna do. So I think we just call the vote what we wanna do. And then we'll find out what the council really wants to do with this. Because we're kind of beating around the bush here, it seems like to me. So unless we hear from somebody else. I just, I just would like to ask a couple of questions that I hope will be helpful. Um, firstly, there are two separate workshops, potentially proposal for topics. And, and this is addressed at Ms. Writing since you're on the committee. Um, it, would it be helpful to prioritize one or the other? Um, do we have the ability to do both? What really, what does that look like? And um, I guess, do we have to match in full? Meaning, do we have to send 15 people as an example, as was laid out by Mr. Ugaritz? Or can we, can we make some other level of commitment potentially if we're in the interest of, of managing our resources at a different level. Corey Writings. May I, res may I respond to that? Sure. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> um, thanks, Ms. Benson. Um, in terms of prioritizing the workshops, like one or the other, um, I don't feel comfortable speaking on behalf of the steering committee about that. Um, as Teresa presented, I think there was like seven or eight that were discussed about what we think we could be beneficial and would be beneficial to the council. Um, so I'm sorry, I can't really answer that question. Um, my understanding was that the ability to do both was ideal. I think that TNC has been coming forth with the concept of having two separate workshops um, as they conceptualize this, as we discussed in throughout 2023. Um, you know, the logistics around that, whether it needs to be two separate or how that happens or online versus on, um, in person. Um, we've heard that in person is preferred just because it provides richer fodder for discussion and sharing. Um, but again, I'm not sure there's any finality around that. And I think you asked about the 15 person. Um, we'd have to bring Ms. Labriola back up if you wanted more details on that. My understanding is that's um, their best estimate in terms of what would be most efficient and effective in a workshop format. Person? Thank, thank you, that's helpful. I guess my one other question on this would be, um, how long funding for TNC is through, meaning if we did one and found it of value, would the opportunity be there to do a second one? I, I guess I'm a little hesitant to say, let's do two in light of the budget conversation, um, although I am very supportive of both topics and just curious if there's a way we can um, get a better handle on, on how this is going to be of value for us. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I actually, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I see Corey Niles looking a little twitchy over there. So I would maybe defer to him. 
Is that any different than normal? Um, but the sorry, I missed the question. Um, Krista. Sure. The question was, could we do one, see how it goes? And is there time and resources to potentially throw the second one later in the year? Um, if it's been successful on the first one and we would wish to. Yeah, well, I think my original idea that I said a few minutes ago, which and I think John's disagreement glossed over was I, I think we say, yeah, I think then one of the workshops was going to happen in the fall anyway. The IRA one was going to be in July. So I would advise the Nature Conservancy to plan contingently on us not being able to send anyone or to send up to 15 people. And then we will have that. Um, they can plan that. And if, if the council needs to have that budget discussion in June, which I think is reasonable, that's, that's what I see is the, the consensus way forward. And the budget considerations make sense to me. Um, I just, I, what doesn't make sense to me is people questioning the relevance or value of, of the topics in the discussion. So yeah, that was my suggestion. Let's ask the, them to plan for us not sending people and, and then, uh, and versus us sending people and we'll have the budget discussion in, discussion in June. Uh, John Evers? Yeah, thanks. And and again, to be clear, I'm not questioning the validity of the topics or the benefit of having these discussions. I am solely questioning the ability of the council within our limited budget and our limited time to send people. And so Corey's last statement regarding a contingent agreement that is based on what we learn in June is much more palatable. Dr. Burton. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, just appreciate the discussion here. Um, I have a couple of thoughts going. One is in regards to the TNCs, their first proposal on IRA project. Uh, I don't know what to call it, coordination. I'll just, I'll reemphasize, um, we will do something like that anyway. And um, if we proceed uh, without council staff, which I, I think was mentioned by somebody, uh, there's no, there's no value in that. Uh, we'll have to do it again. Uh, so um, the, the idea of that discussion, that coordination, I think we're all on the same page that should happen. It will happen. Um, where, where I am uh, struggling is um, it's hard for me to imagine going to the GMT right now and saying, we're going to have you make a July meeting. Um, I, we have competing workload we have people that are at risk of burnout very frequently. Um, the GMT isn't the only group. It's hard for me to look at some of my staff and ask them to do that. Um, the, uh, the IRA funding, uh, if it all comes through, I'm not too concerned about attending the workshop. Um, I, I don't have a number in front of me about how much it would cost us to do that. Uh, but my biggest concern is just asking people who are pushed to their limits and beyond right now to do more. And um, I don't question the, the value if that wasn't a concern, but that is a huge concern that I have, and I think we all have. And um, so I, I don't know where that leaves us. I mean, I, I value the idea of this coordination, this discussion, uh, getting the agencies together. Like I said, that's something we'll do anyway if there's a way to bring in some help from TNC to make that happen anyway, that that's great, but it's hard for me to imagine asking more of people at this point, just coming out of this April meeting in particular. Okay. Thank you, Merrick. Corey. Yeah. I'm just confused, Merrick. Then if we're going to do this anyway, and those people are burned out then they're going to be burned out either way. So um, I think we've heard enough to, for the Nature Conservancy to proceed. The coordination I'm speaking to, Corey, is a coordination that we do as staff with other agencies. And so uh, when we bring on a IRA staff officer, that person will coordinate with other agencies, with those staff who are also working on IRA projects. 
Uh, I also envision Mr. Dahl uh, participating in that since he's been staffing a lot of this climate work. What I'm getting at is the the extra bodies that have been discussed as part of these workshops that would attend to, for lack of a better word, to socialize and, and bring along more of our council family into those discussions. That's the part I'm getting at that I'm having a hard time finding space for, uh, just given the workload that we have. Corey, then Mark. Oh, sorry, I didn't see Mark's hand. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to synthesize this discussion in my head. And, and what I'm hearing is that we may be getting news. We may be getting more helpful information in the next couple of months on how to proceed. I'm also hearing that uh, there will be some level of coordination regardless of what we, what we decide here. Uh, I think I also heard from Teresa that um, while there is, it would be helpful to get at least a contingent approval I, I'm not sensing there's a time pressure to do that at this meeting. So I'm wondering to myself, and and maybe maybe I'm wrong, that while this discussion is helpful, I'm not certain that we need to make a decision right now on whether to approve contingent funding. And we may actually be in a better place in June to have that discussion. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Corey? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thanks, Mark. I think that's a nice summation. Um, on that note, and just thinking about the fact that this discussion has been going on for one and a half to two years, um, I hear different viewpoints on sort of the history about how this came to be and what decisions were made. I'm wondering if we could ask Ms. Labriola to come back up to the table to maybe um, elaborate a little bit more on the timing, if that's okay. Do you think that will bring clarity? I think it will. I mean, that's my intent. Let's get some clarity here and move on. Well, we have time. Teresa? Thank you. Um, I can either speak or if there's a specific question. <laughs> yeah, I was just re uh, reflecting. I'm not sure if you heard what Mr. Gorelnik was saying, but just noting, you know, given that we're still struggling with some ongoing funding issues, and I think we're still getting our head around exactly how to potentially um, coordinate and exactly what the council's desires are looking in terms of a goal to get out of this. And there seems to be some confusion on who would be engaged. Um, and just also in my own mind, I'm reflecting on the fact that we've been at this for a year and a half. And you noted that TNC's already asked for an extension once. Um, I heard Mr. Grelnick say, let's, let's think about this a little bit more. We'll have more information in June and then we can kind of finish that discussion then. Um, um, so I guess what I'm asking is, does that work for TNC? Thank you, Ms. Ridings and Chair Pettinger. Um, we are, I, I always want to be optimistic and say yes, but at this point, I'm not sure that we can extend and go, well, we'll wait until June to start planning um, anymore. So this is a, uh, you know, as, as a deadline for us is, is this meeting to know what there is, um, contingent. Yeah, we like this and we'd, we'd, um, we'd like to, uh, support this when IRA funds come in. And, and I think that in itself is, you know, extending, um, extending an olive branch, so to speak, to try and make this work because we will in the next two months work with the steering committee and, uh, facilitators to do a lot of work to plan a meeting that can happen uh, relatively quickly after IRA funding is made. And so um, I, 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 I think this is a meeting we would need some, can, some commitment in order to um, get that going. And even the second workshop on risk tables, which we had talked about in November, um, just again, there's 
uh, again, if there was a uh, council indication that that was something they're interested in, we can start working on that. But waiting until June and then uh, I think from our perspective, trying to then plan two workshops within the course of, you know, three to four months, um, we're then cutting off how effective I think it can be giving people enough notice to be able to get to meetings. And we can try to take these workshops in a bit of a different direction that doesn't require council um, coordination. And I, I hate to say that. I don't like to be the, the one who says now, but it, it is now. Okay. Any questions for Teresa? Okay. Thanks, Teresa. <clears throat> okay. I'll hear from anybody else. Corey? Last thought is I, in the, the Merrick's where I think we're not seeing eye to eye is it sounds like Merrick is planning on doing these IRA funds in a way that we don't do the process normally, which is not having, it's going to be staff at the region, staff, his staff, science center staff coordinating, not in the advisor, advisory bodies not being involved. So that's maybe I'm misunderstanding that. But um, yeah, I don't want to prolong the discussion, but I we were envisioning this IRA funding project and the Science Center IRA funding project, region IRA funding project is working the process like we have normally where advisory bodies and stakeholders get involved through the normal council process. Eric? Uh, th there's a lot of work, Mr. Niles, that um, council staff do, that regional staff do, that Science Center staff do, that I know state agency staff do. Um, in support of the council process that um, we don't bring it to you. Uh, and when we start a, uh, any project, there's a, there's a coordination activity to uh, coordinate our workload and our resources and to map out how, how that work will take place. Um, typically what we do is then we bring that plan to the council. Um, and so as you look at the year at a glance, there's some reference to that type of activity. Um, Ms. Writings and I had a conversation maybe a, an hour or so ago just about cross FMP and there's a couple IRA project notes there with that in mind. So the coordination um, is something that we do a lot just to manage our work and kickstart our work. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. Krista? Um, yeah, I, I feel like we're getting a little wrapped around the IRA component. There are two, two separate workshops on the table, and we've just heard we basically need to come to a decision on do we want to do either of them. Um, I don't know if IRA and all of the conversation around that, I, I don't even know what to call that workshop, is the direction this council wants to take um, if we want to look at doing uh, the second workshop. I don't know if we want to do anything, but I, I, I just don't want to get stuck on kind of a ping pong but about IRA. If, if the appetite is there, or isn't there, I think we should take a vote. Um, and otherwise, if, if we're really more interested in that second workshop, then, um, and there is appetite for that, maybe we just look at that one, but that may be helpful in terms of kind of coming to some resolution here. All right. Well, but I'm not seeing much appetite for committing funds before June on anything. Um, that doesn't necessarily buy and go with what Teresa oh, share. I'm contemplating this, but certainly I heard um, Corey's writings, <laughs> you know, description about all of the good work the council has already done relative to CCI and how that pathway is likely going to be FMP amendments, um, which is part of council's work. But also you, you kind of implied at the end that this workshop, um, you kind of tied that to the 
NOAA fisheries hirings, particularly in the Northwest region of staff, and how somehow this workshop would help to influence what NIMPS does. Um, but I, I don't know why we do we, if we've done all this great work, why would we need a third party to help us communicate to NIMPS about what we see as the priorities from all the good work we've done? I'm having, a, I am having a hard time understanding the value of the first workshop proposal. Thanks, Eric. Corey? Thanks, Ms. Kiefer. Um, I mean, I've, <laughs> to be honest, I've had those questions too, um, in, in actually across many things. Um, and to be really blunt, the answer is just in, in chatting with folks at NIMPS and with chatting with scientists, with understanding how their programs work, um, that they find it really beneficial to have more guidance from us and get more opportunities for council engagement so that they can be more responsive to our needs, which is something we continually ask for. Um, I think one thing worth noting is um, a lot of times under the more specific FMP agenda items that we do, it can be more clear you know, because we have more specific reports, more specific processes, more specific science tools. And when it comes to thinking about climate and especially ecosystem, they're more nebulous. You know, they're by definition more complex and they have more management questions associated with them and even more sort of disciplinary science associated with them. So, and I mean, I think that's representative of just, um, you know, it can be harder collectively to get our heads around what science is the best that can be done to serve the management needs of the council. Does that help? Sure. Um, a little bit, but I guess when I hear that, what I think of is more, do we need more to be scheduling more consistently on the agenda relative to those kinds of conversations within a council process? I'm, I'm still just having a hard time you bring a bunch of people together and you kind of throw things and see what sticks on the wall. And I don't know that that's better or worse. Um, but given that we do have some other constraints, it just, again, I'm having a hard time uh, understanding the priority benefit. Okay. Um, Lynn, and then we're going to Go ahead first. Okay. I've been mostly quiet. I've been quiet while listening to this. Um, rather than say a whole lot, I'm going to say ditto to Corey and Corey, what they have been saying um, in regards to how we move forward. Uh, I think having this bigger discussion in June in coordination with our budget discussion is good. And at that point, rather than continue to string TNC you know, along. Um, I have a very colorful phrase in mind, but it, I'm not going to use that one. Instead, I'm going to be appropriate and say we need to fish or cut bait. Um, let the TNC move forward at another process, um, not keep, just keep putting the planning down the road. Um, so I think when we have that discussion in June, we need to make a decision so that everybody knows how we're moving forward. But I, I agree that we need these workshops. Okay. Well, Phil? I think where I am on this, um, after listening to everyone, um, including Teresa, um, I'm in a bit of a disagreement with several things that I've heard relative to the level of support that we have shown for these workshops up to this point in time, which I think has been significant. Whether each time we've said that it's been with caveats is fair there. Um, but the overarching support that we voiced for these workshops is undeniable. And um, I have some of the same reservations, particularly about the first workshop that Chair and others have voiced um, because I was left I'm still left with a bit of uncertainty uh, in terms of what is trying to be accomplished at the first one. 
but all that said is I, I, I have confidence um, in the work that has been and thought that's been putting put, been put into these workshops up to this point in time across the board by the people who have been active in it. I'm prepared to support a, um, a commitment that is contingent on um, a commitment that takes us forward to June um, with the, with the contingents, with the caveat that um, we have a full understanding of the, if there are trade-offs relative to the expenditures, I want to know what the expenditures are, and I would like to have a clearer delineation of the purpose of the first workshop in June. But um, again, my, my fundamental perspective is that I have confidence in the people that are putting these together. I have, I have, I, I believe we need to respect the, the, the uh, support that we have shown up to this point in time and brought them along. Um, I need a little bit more information, um, but I think they can, they can bring that back to us in June and that we could hear back from our executive director in June to have a complete understanding of where we are from a financial perspective. And if at that time we conclude that the um, repercussions of funding it are um, uh, outweigh moving forward, we can make that determination at that time. Okay. Uh, I think there was also, it was, a, it was a fiscal issue and also a personnel issue too, I believe it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's exactly where I'm going on this. I, I think there's, you know, the financial ability to do it is a little bit in question with the delay in IRA funding and, and that and understand that and got a pretty clear picture. And I agree with all your comments, Phil, that on, I'm in, in agreement with that. But my overarching thing is nobody has a better per perspective of the effect on our council staff than our executive director. And he's registered pretty strong comments here that this is gonna be a lot of work for them. And at a time when we have a lot of transition as we all seen this week in our, in our council staff, which really loads up the remaining folks and the new folks to get people in, in gear. And, and, and get back to, a, you know, running smoothly. I, I, I defer to that over all of it. We may have the money and may have the, the desire, but if we overtax our staff to the detriment of all the other work we do, I'm against that. And all, there's one person that has that, well, our, our executive staff has that perspective. And I defer to that above all. So that's that's my perspective on this. And we can say, yeah, we're going to do it. But if ultimately we don't have the capacity to do it, or if it's detrimental, then we shouldn't do it. So that's that's where I'm at. Okay, thank you, Bob. Bush Smith. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, Bob. Bob, I think is spot on. It's. Uh, a lot of times in business decisions, you'd like to do it, you want to do it, one, but do you have the money to do it? That's number one. But uh, we, in the council, don't have the same gauge that Merrick has on his staff and how hard they work and how much work they're doing. Because we don't see the day-to-day -day operations when we, you know, we go away and come back every three months or whatever it is. So I, I um, I tend to agree with that statement you said, Bob, and, and support that because uh, you know we we are going through a major transition in in the council, and and uh, and I would imagine through that transition, there's you know going to be people taken off and help train the other staff members that are coming up, so the the job will be acerbated even more. So I, I just uh, I just wanted to concur with Bob, and and I and I think Mark 
I hate to say it, I might be agreeing with Mark a little bit too, but uh, uh, Mon would know what, what he said on the on the money part to make sure we have the money to to pay for it. I, I totally agree with that. And in any way, so thank you, Mister Mister Chair. Thanks much. Right. Yeah, thank you. And I've been kind of waiting to hear the decision discussion here and um, assumed at some point someone might ask the person in the nymph seat to respond to some of the comments. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of summarize where I am here. I mean, I, I appreciate the comments that have been made. Um, I agree with Phil that there has been a number of support uh, that we've expressed at previous meetings. Um, but I also share a lot of the concerns uh, regarding um, workload and uh, and that. But that said, you know, NIPS has, has been engaged. Um, I, I am a little confused. I don't have the PowerPoint here, but, um, uh, you know, I previously thought the guidance we were looking to give them if we supported these workshops were to be, if this should be solely initiative four focused, if it should be focused on these risk tables or, you know, kind of some little more specifics around, not just if we endorse uh, the workshops, but the specific agendas and, and focus of it. Um, I was a little taken aback to hear the suggestion that won't that some or even an entire workshop would be focused on NIMPS and how it is spending its um, IRA funds. And, and I'm not sure that is um, the most constructive way forward. And I also think there may be some misinformation about um, how the, what is being utilized through that very small portion of the overall IRA funding. Um, but that said, uh, happy to continue this discussion. I do think in June, there will be a little bit more pieces on the table. Um, I can confirm that IRA decisions, not just for the council's funds, but also for a very small portion for the region to help also support working on what the council may uh, utilize with its IRA funds. Those decisions will be made over the coming weeks. Uh, we'll have that information in June. Um, we also will have some initial discussions between the regions and the science centers regarding their portion of the climate and ecosystem fisheries initiative work, uh, especially at least at the regional level and some of their thoughts and potentially can bring some of that back as well in June uh, to incorporate into the discussion here. Um, maybe I'll stop there. That's at least where I think NIMS is at this point. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Okay, Mark. We just have more thoughts here. I'm going back to where we started, which was um, what's the purpose? And um, I think we do have to think about uh, just you know roles and responsibilities in our process. And um, I think some of that is uh, not very clear as we have these discussions and. So when it comes to you know, like the management of council resources and how we get workload done, that's one of the, the that's one of the reasons why you have me. <laughs> and if uh, you want somebody else to do that, you don't need me. Um, and I, I don't think that's what TNC is suggesting, but um, it does then uh, help think about what the workshops might be best for uh, if we do move forward with uh, uh, partnering with TNC on them. And I, I think what they wouldn't be for is to ask hey, everybody, how, what do you want to do? And, and how should we spend our money? And that just wouldn't be appropriate. And I don't think anyone's suggesting that, but that's one bookend. Um, and so if there's a, maybe a need to backfill in um, this rough process we've gone through to put these proposals together, and there are some questions out there still about what are we doing and uh, why is it this way? And, um, are there better ways to do it? I, that sounds like a great discussion because um, we have had to go through a pretty awkward process to get these proposals together. Um, and so perhaps that's something we can get more specific on in the scope of a workshop, which is can we bring people together and, and help to understand what it is we're really proposing and how it might look uh, in practice as we execute. Um, and then continue then to you know have to defer to I would expect you would still want to defer to me and Kelly and um, 
in consultation with you all and how our resources are expended, how we get that onto our agenda and things of that nature. So I'm, I'm offering up those thoughts um, here as, as I think I'm hearing that there's support for doing a workshop, but there's just a need for more specificity about what they are um, in addition to some of the human resource and financial constraints. <laughs> Krista? Oh. Um, well, I think we heard pretty clearly from Teresa that we need to make a decision today about whether we're going to move forward or not. I also think we've heard pretty clearly from a number of people around the table that they're not interested in at least the IRA CCI conversation um, in terms of staff workload, et cetera. So really, from my perspective, and I am appreciative of your comments, Bill, um, because I think that that is a solid approach in terms of having a clearer perspective in terms of what a workshop would look like, um, funding, providing we get it going towards this. I'm also going to note that there were eight topics on there and we had two that were prioritized. I don't know that those were prioritized in terms of what the workshops have to be as much as it gave specific talking points about what things could be. We've certainly thrown IRA around in council discussion for the last week. And I know if I were proposing a topic, I would be trying to make it relevant. So I don't, I, I cannot speak for TNC or anybody else. I'm not part of the steering committee, but I, I just, I want to get off that rock because it sounds to me like that's a sticking point for a lot of people um, that we probably don't want to move forward with, particularly because they're asking for that one in July. Um, but that if there is interest in having a workshop or workshops that we indicate that we are interested, because I feel like we're, we're reaching out going, oh, we, you know, we're interested and we kind of want to do this. And let's talk about it in June. I'm sorry. She said, we need to make a decision today about do we want to indicate interest? Personally, I'd like to indicate interest based on the conversation. I'm, I'm not that interested in having a workshop on the IRA in, in uh, hearing from our executive director and from NIMS, but um, I could probably be talked off that ledge too, if appropriate, but just trying to, trying to move us forward here. Corey had her hand up first over there. Corey, writings? Corey Niles. Yeah, I guess, Chris, and I really want to, I think we wrap this up, but you have the three state agencies most involved in the ecosystem world saying that, yes, the IRA, the three West Coast agencies and Idaho is involved, saying this is relevant and valuable. I, I think the Nature Conservancy can move on without us. And if we can send people and have money to send people to what they're organize, organ, organizing in June, that's a way forward. Um, you have the Ecosystem Working Group on the steering committee. You have the Northwest Fisheries Science Center on the steering committee saying that these ideas have value. That's where the recommendation came from. So, Chris, that's the only thing I just, that is, that has a high value, but I, I this is too messy. I think the nature the steering committee can move on. Um, I think Phil's idea was very similar to mine. I think they can, I think the contingency is not, is pretty low that we're not going to get IRA funds. So I would, I would, I propose this wrapping this up and having the nature conservancy come back in June with, with, with their, um, I'm trying to think of the phrase, just cleaning, cleaning up, cleaning this up, and and moving forward with their objectives. Okay, um, Corey, writings. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I was just, I would just concur with that. I agree with what Mr. Niles said, and I agree with what Mr. Anders said said earlier. Um, I think there's a little bit of a rub point here in terms of the funding, but if we can agree to sort of preliminarily say yes, if we get the IRA funding, and then have Ms. Labriola and TNC come back in June with some details and additionally have Director Burden come back in June with details and see how those things move forward. Um, in terms of that rub spot, I'm hearing there's a chance TNC may come back and say, sorry, too late. Um, but um, maybe it's just, we're just not there yet. And so 
Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm agreeing with Mr. Anderson and Mr. Niles. I think there's a, a spot between the middle to go through and, and it's an okay spot to be in. Okay. One second. All right, sir. Yeah, let me try to synthesize because I think there are a few opinions uh, floating around. I'm not quite sure if we're all on the same page, but um, I think my best guess where we're landing here um, is that uh, there is support for partnering with the Nature Conservancy. Um, and there are some questions about what exactly that looks like. And there's some hope that that's enough for Teresa Labriola to keep moving forward. And um, I'm looking that way and she's not looking at me. So I don't <laughs> um, there, there was some discussion still about whether the workshops should focus on IRA funding or not. And I'm not sure where that ended up. I do think we have to be uh, at least that specific. Uh, just putting my old um, NGO hat on and thinking about conversations that have to have have to happen with funders. Uh, I do think there's some specificity that they will need uh, in order to continue to report on progress. Um, so I think what we're saying is that it, if we were to partner with Nature Conservancy on uh, these IRA workshops, there's some general or neutral support for that, but there's questions about detail. And I've outlined in a previous comment what I think the detail is, and I think part of that is roles and responsibilities, and who does what. Um, but that's what I'm gathering, and I'm seeing maybe some confused faces. So we'll see if we can keep, keep getting there. Corey? Well, maybe mixed. But I, again, and Mr. Ugaretz, please speak up, and Lynn, please speak up. But all three of our agencies said there's value in the IRA projects. So, I, and we've said that multiple times, and I think Mrs. Ridings and has said so as well. Um, I heard Bob and Butch worry about budget, budget, which we spoke to at the very beginning about, yes, let's talk about this in June. The value, I have not heard anyone but the executive director have, maybe that's wrong, but question the, the, the relevance and value. I understand we're not melding here on what we're, we're talking past each other, I understand, but I've heard pretty unequivocal expression of value in the IRA workshop. Krista? Just so that I can clarify my comments in terms of IRA, I'm not suggesting that there is not value. I'm suggesting if that workshop needs to happen, that TNC not wait for the council, that the states could participate outside of um, staff may choose under our executive director's guidance. Uh, if the workshop looks like it would be of value to attend, that that is totally within his purview. Um, if the council says, no, you know what, we see value as well, great. But really, from my perspective, I, I see some value. I don't have enough detail to say, yes, sign me up today. Um, but if if TNC sees the value there and we don't have the ability to get them what they need, that they should proceed without us. Okay, Krista, I'm kind of, it's hard to wrap your arms around this, so. Phil Anderson. I know we all want to stand. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we, where does that leave us relative to the assessment of the workload for staff? I appreciate the question and the concern about workload. Um, so I tried to speak to this a couple of times. I, the, uh, as, as we know, our staff are 
changing quite rapidly. Um, one of the hires I would like to make soon is a staffer that leads our IRA work. And I, I don't think that's too far away, but we don't have the funding yet, so it hasn't happened. There's also the workload of our advisory bodies. And um, this meeting has been a rough one for a lot of people, and it's hard for me to imagine asking them to do more at this point. So I think there's that staff consideration also. Maybe as we flesh out the workshop, we can resolve those things, but those are large outstanding questions that I have. And um, it's hard for me to imagine, like I said, asking some of our management team and advisory panel members to do more in July, which is one of the one of the two months we don't have meetings. So or planning for meetings or wrapping up meetings. So appreciate the question. That's a bit of an answer for you. Bill. Well, that continues to be a, maybe my biggest concern. So, um, and I don't know how to deal with that today, but um, I just don't think we can move forward with something that there's an expectation that staff that we have participating in our process that already have more than 100% on their plates that we can add to it. So if there's a way to do this without having that happen, great. If not, then that's a problem. Okay. Yes, so with that, I'm I don't think we're going to make any commitments today. Is that what I'm getting here? Mr. Hasmer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm sure everybody's glad to see my hand go up. <laughs> um, I haven't weighed in. Maybe the first thing is it, it's not going to help, but um, <clears throat> a little bit of internal healing is a lot of this discussion we're having today. And I reread our September of last year transcripts that wasn't much that much different than what we're talking about today. And it goes back, you know, <clears throat> I think we have to scold NIMS here first. And that's the internal healing is last October, we heard that we were getting money in December that would help this. And then you would get another big chunk of money in January. And this is related to the IRA. And none of that has happened. We still don't know if we're getting it. And we're fought, we're caught up in this discussion. So, you know, point of finger. And, and I hope it helps internally that it's not us fighting amongst one, one another, but there's something external things that, uh, leave us here that we're still not sure how we can fund it. Another piece of the funding, um, you know, I think about that hard and as <clears throat> the chair of your budget committee meeting, I have to think about it hard. We did way back, maybe it was 2022 or I'm not sure when support um, the nature conservancy and going ahead and applying for the grants. This is one of those in my head now, and it relates to some other comments. Be careful what you ask for, because I'm not sure we understood at that time there was an expectation that if they got the grant, that we were going to pay also to do that. There's joint workshops. There's providing support for the workshop and so far. But at least, and I can go back and try and sort that out. But at least today, I know that now the Nature Conservancy came back and said, yes, we have the money for the workshops, but you need to um, commit people, workload, and money in order for that to happen. And so um, our discussion is make trying to make that happen. And it's led to, I think, one of uh, executive directors Burden's bookends he mentioned where um, the Nature Conservancy has the money, can do the workshop, 
it would be nice to partner with them and be able to focus specifically on the council needs, but there's a cost to doing that. So um, I, I guess to wrap it up, we're talking about staff involvement. I haven't heard the council say, uh, the council committed our staff officer, Dr. Dahl, to participate with the Nature Conservancy on the steering committee. I, I believe that was a decision that we made that, yes, commit that staff time there. The steering committee was formulated, and there are council members here who are part of that steering committee that are doing that not as part of any um, council pay or support to my understanding, but the steering committee is still functional and it has that. So in the, in the matter of having to go to that bookend about having the uh, workshop without council financial support or staff support, it could still happen. And there's, there's a, opportunities for input to develop that and look at some of the past documents and things and what's a, a value. And again, the prior you know thoughts for the workshops was initiative four. The IRA was a later development in that. So um, I don't know if that helps, but there are still staff involved if the if the nature conservancy has to go forward, we've approved some of that staff involvement to provide council input on that. Our reports are there. Um, so I just want to say my, you know, I'm, I'm frustrated we're having this because we still have no idea. I think the contingency plans about coming back in June are good, but I think you know, we need to accept that one of those contingencies is the workshop may occur without council financial support and and some large uh, staff support. So thank you. Apologize for being so long there. Okay. Thank you, Pete, for kind of summarizing kind of how things went down here. So, okay. Corey? Didn't mean to interrupt you. The, the topic of Corey Ridings' report, I was going to speak to that quickly. If My plane don't leave till 4.30, so please. <laughs> and I just want to um, thank her for that. I like the, I don't know if we have time to discuss those ideas. Maybe June stock assessment priority ground fish would be a, a place to respond to that. Um, I think the question, you know, having the luxury of bending around and having my duties involve talking to people, working with people who, who who know the data. I think I would just add to it. Yeah, I think Washington and would want to be involved. But the question I think I would really focus us on and what data does it take to make an assessment robust? And Mark spoke to that yesterday with Canary. And it's not just a California issue. It's a we don't have I think you'll hear a lot of assessment authors say we don't have a good fishery independent index of abundant for a lot of the rockfish who live in rockfish habitat. And that's true for Washington and Oregon, despite our efforts at, um, you know, even in thanks to Mr. Anderson's effort many years ago that getting a special fund to do this, it's still very hard to do. And on that, I think I would throw budget into this as well, um, explain the budgets of each state and the federal government would all work together to do things like read auto lists and collect the age structures and all that and PACFIN being a major source for the states and doing that kind of work and the sampling has been flat funded for uh, you know over 15 years. Um, so I would just, I, I really appreciate her putting those thoughts together. Yes, Washington would like to be involved and these are coast wide issues and really the question is how, how to build up our, you know, what data is needed to do more robust stock assessments. Well, good point. Then that is. Thank you, Chair. Uh, following on with Mr. Niles, uh, ODFW is willing and wants to be involved in this process too. I think it will benefit us all in the long run. Um, the, the how, the nuts and bolts of it um, can be worked out, but we want to be involved. Thank you, Lynn. Anybody else? Certainly, there's a need for understanding where we're at as far as the data that's there before we decide on stock assessments. It'd be nice. So, okay. 
I'm not seeing anybody saying no, right? Oh, Eric? I'm not going to say no. <laughs> um, just to make sure I understand what the what the suggestion is here. Uh, sounds like there's a lot of support for Ms. Writing's write-up. Thank you. Um, but that we would talk about it more in June. Is that where people are landing? Okay. Okay. Well, with that, I think that's Kelly. Are we done? <laughs> Through the chair, I'll also look to Executive Director Burden, but from my perspective, uh, we have the staff guidance that we need at this point. Make sure we're not doing anything on the TNC workshop until June, right? That's, that's the plan. That's what I got out of that. Okay, so, all right. Well, very good, I just need one thing to happen. Still. I move we adjourn. Thank you. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Unanimous. Aye. Perfect. <sighs> Thank you, everyone. What a crazy week. Uh, safe travels home and look forward to seeing you in San Diego. <laughs>